Adios, it amigo. Is far and it is gone. Holy cow. Zane Harris crushed that one. A long drive towards right center field, and it's gone in the trees. It's from Bridgewick. Swung on and missed, and the ball game is over. The Harbor Hawks have defeated the Katuit Kettleers. That one is a good long drive towards left field, and gone! You're listening to the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Harbor Hawks Baseball Network coming to you from Red Wilson Field for this game between the Highness Harbor Hawks and the YD Red Sox. Lincoln Revel alongside Austin Dakota. And Austin, after a couple of tough losses for the Harbor Hawks here, we look to bounce back against the Red Sox and break this three-game losing skid. Yeah, the Harbor Hawks have put together a couple of close games lately. They lost 2-1 to one against the Kettleers back on Wednesday last night. Final score of 13-7. to seven. The bats have been hitting well. Just have to put it all together in one night. We'll see what, what Hyannis can do tonight against YD. We're just about to get underway here, but first, before we go any further, we're going to toss it on over to our sideline reporter, Taylor Farmer. Taylor, what's the scoop? I talked with Caden before the game, and, you know, it's his last day. He's been with Hyannis the whole summer. He talks about how good this experience was getting to play with different guys from all around the country. You know, he is from Alabama, so coming up here to the north and just getting used to what the north is. And, you know, Hunter Furtado, one of the pitchers for Hyannis, will go to Alabama with him. He said while Hunter was in the transfer portal, he was bugging him to come to Alabama, so he's really excited to get there and play with him. Thank you very much, Thank you very much Taylor. Be sure to stay tuned to tonight's game to hear from Taylor a couple more times in tonight's game. And we're just about ready to get underway here as Clark Elliott will be leading us off. And on that note, Austin, what does the starting lineup look like for the Harbor Hawks here tonight? As mentioned, Clark Elliott, the league leader in batting average, will lead off high ends tonight and play center field. Batting second is Dom Johnson, the right fielder. Batting third, the third baseman, Luke Mann. And the cleanup spot tonight is Nick Romano, the first baseman. Batting fifth, Kyle Ball, the short shortstop. Batting sixth, Mitch Hardigan, the left fielder. Batting seven, the second baseman, Trent Taylor. Batting eight, the catcher, Joey Raffelli. And batting ninth, Caden Rose, who will be DHing in his last game for the Harbor Hawks this season. And in steps Clark Elliott, who is having quite a season this, this Cape League season on an 18-game on-base streak so far as he steps in for his first at-bat. First pitch coming in from Adam Meyer is in. And we are underway. Elliott just had a sensational season all around Activated on July 4th, makes his first start the day later, and since then it's just been on fire all season long. Myers fires that one in, count evens out at one and one now. Adam Mayer from University of British Columbia has the one one. Check swing, did he go? Yes he did, says home plate umpire Tyler Bullock, and that brings the count to one and two. It's a good pitch there from Meyer. Uh, Pitch just below the knees that drops off a bit, gets Elliott to check his swing. We'll see where he goes now on one two. One two the count. Meyer from the windup. Foul tip caught by the catcher Keegan, and that is out number one. Elliott goes down swinging. Just a good sequence there from Meyer on the mound. Tough pitch to hit there. Very early in this game, and we've seen Elliott's success, especially late in ball games. So just the first at bat of many tonight. Going around the horn for the Red Sox real quick. Once again, Adam Meyer on the mound. We have Dom Ke Dominic Keegan behind the plate. Lou over at third. Lee at shortstop. We have Hoffman over at second. Bowser over at first. That one is chopped and fouled down the third base side for strike one. Owen won the count. We have Huff over in left field. That is Briley Knight out in center field. And Latrell will be out in right field for the Red Sox here tonight. Harbor Hawks in their away blue jerseys, blue shirts with orange lettering and numbering as the pitch comes in, it's fouled off. Count goes to 0-2. YD has had a solid season to this point. Lincoln coming in at 13-13-7. and A bunch of ties for this Red Sox team. One of the teams without lights at their ballpark, so we've seen a couple of games end a little bit prematurely here. But with today's 4.30 start, we hope to get all nine innings in. The 0-2 breaking ball misses down low. And away, one ball and two strikes the count. It's a good idea from Meyer there on 0 and 2. Try to get Johnson to chase it, something outside the zone. We'll see where he comes back now on 1 2. 1 2. 
Fouled off once again. That one coming in about chest high. A good battle here from Johnson. Seems to have some good velocity on that fastball and a good spot to try to get Johnson up and in. Tough on right-handed hitters, especially with Meyer being a right-handed pitcher. The Red Sox once again at 13, 13, and 7, currently in third place in the East Division, battling for that second place spot as the 1 2 misses outside, 2 and 2 the count. It's a good take there by Johnson. Meyer tried to shoot the outside corner, but just missed outside. Good pitch to take. A sunny day from Yarmouth, a little bit cloudy in the sky. Wind and uh, the temperature here at 73 degrees as Johnson swings and misses at that one. Out number two and strikeout number two for Adam Meyer. It's a good breaking ball there. And a pair of Harbor Hawks down on the punch out early on. A team that hasn't struck out a lot lately. They've been putting the ball in play a ton. But unfortunately, Meyer looks sharp in the first. Harbor Hawks in last night's game reaching double digits in strikeouts for the first time in what seems like forever. We've Even had a quite a few games with a low number of strikeouts as that one's chopped over towards second. That's Hoffman coming up. Throw to first is in time for out number three. A one, two, three inning for the Red Sox to start us off as we head to the bottom half of the first scoreless on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hi, I'm Aiden Saravo, right-handed pitcher for Highest Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Right. That works. Speaking of Adrian Saravo, he toes the rubber to start us off here in the bottom half of the first inning as we are just about get ready to get underway here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Lincoln Revel alongside Austin Dakota here with you for today's game as we get underway here, starting off with the Red Sox lineup. Wyatt Hoffman is going to start us off at second base, followed by Tanner Smith, the DH. Brooks Lee will be at shortstop. Dominic Keegan, the catcher, will be in the cleanup spot, followed by Chase Luttrell in the five hole in right field. Cody Huff, the left fielder, will be in the six hole, followed by Drew Bowser, the first baseman. Briley Knight in center field, batting in the eight hole. And Zach Liu will be the third baseman, and he'll be batting in the nine hole here tonight. A solid YD lineup top to bottom. They've had some success at home especially. Really used to this ballpark. Red Wilson Field and taking a look at the Harbor Hawk defensive alignment for tonight. Uh, as mentioned on the mound, Adrian Saravo behind the disc, Joey Raffelli, the catcher over at third, Luke Mann, who's made a mainstay over at that position this season. We saw him at second base a couple times. At short, Kyle Ball, per usual, over at second, Trent Taylor, over at first, Nick Romano, the outfield and left, Mitchell Hardigan in center, Clark Elliott and in right, Dom Johnson. We've seen that outfield trio nearly every game. Joey Raffelli making his first start of the season. He's had a couple of appearances, but tonight is his first time behind the dish for this first for the first inning of a game as Saravo steps in, ready to bring his first pitch home to Hoffman. Big swing and a miss there as we get underway here in the bottom of the first. Owen won the count. Wyatt Hoffman, the son of MLB Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman, one of the greatest closers of all time. Wyatt, a second baseman, not a pitcher. A one spiked in the dirt, one and one the count. Saravo from Weatherford College. He made his last appearance against the Orleans Firebirds, part of that 12-7 victory. Went four innings in that ball game, allowing four runs. 
seven hits, two walks, and striking out five. He left with a no decision. Cooper McKeon came in relief and picked up the W. You tune into our Birds the Word podcast coming up in a couple of days. We'll end up talking a little bit about Cooper McKeon and the outstanding week that he's had as that ball is swung and missed, bringing the count now to two and two. And Saravo, an all-star this year for Hyannis, has been one of the most consistent players on this ball club with a 2.91 ERA, one of the best in the Cape. 2-2 two -two comes in. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball. Hoffman goes down swinging. And a great start to this inning for Saravo. One away. Good pitch sequence there by Saravo. He does a good job of mixing that fastball that sits around 91 with a nice breaking ball. He features a fastball, a slider, a changeup, and a splitter that he's developed over the offseason. Tanner Smith now at the plate, batting 248 this season. He's got 18 RBI. Scored 14 times as he fouls that first pitch off. And the count moves to 0-1. Smith has 25 hits on the season, including four doubles and three long balls. Now, opponents have been hitting the ball a little bit better off Saravo the last two starts. His first four, the most hits he allowed in the game was three. But the last two, both against Orleans, he allowed five and seven hits. So I think the second time... The Firebird line may have just been used to seeing Saravo as they saw him back-to-back -back time. So Firebirds were able to compile some more hits in time number two, also at their home field at Eldridge Park. And it also doesn't help that Orleans, one of the biggest hitting teams in the Cape, as that one's hit back up the middle, going to be through for a base hit. As Tanner Smith rounds first, he's going to be in with the first base hit of tonight's game. It's a good piece of hitting by Smith. He did get on top of that one a bit, but he timed it well enough to send it back up the middle, and the Red Sox will take that. They'll have a guy on first now. Double plays in order for Hyannis, so if you're Lee, you're looking to keep that ball off the ground in terms of trying to keep away from that double play. You wouldn't mind a hard hit ball somewhere, but definitely want to avoid the double play early in this ball game. Brooks Lee at shortstop for the Red Sox tonight, batting in the left-handed box. Saravo, the right-hander, comes set, brings the first pitch home. That one misses down low, 1-0. and First time that Raffelli has caught Saravo this season. They worked together through a couple of bullpen sessions this week and before the game, of course, spending about an hour together, catching and getting used to what Saravo throws. As we have seen Saravo go as many as six innings, the season high for him. 1-0, runner goes. As that one's fouled off. And a little fake steal there from Smith. He ran a couple of steps and then ended up stopping just to see what would happen on that swing. One and one the count. Sometimes you can draw a throw on that. If, you, if you're a fella, you see the runner going. He's going to pop up a bit as a catcher to attempt to cut him down, and that's when a ball in the dirt could get by him. As he's not in a position to necessarily block it as he kind of jumps up a bit to get ready to th try to throw the runner out. Lee, a switch hitter, batting from the left side. Is that one another fake steal? Misses up high. Two balls and one strike to count. The off-speed pitch just comes out of the, band, the hand a bit early from Saravo. He's been very consistent all season at limiting base runners, so we'll see if he can get a feel for that pitch as the game progresses. An extremely sunny day as there are clouds in the distance, but none over the field today as that will throw over to first is not in time. Tag from Romano. Is a bit late as Smith is in safely. And those are the good clouds. Those are not rain clouds. Yeah, no no rain clouds in sight as of yet. And to the right of us, there's not a single cloud in sight. No. So finally. Very beautiful, pretty cool day. As that one's ripped up the middle, that's going to drop for a base hit in front of Clark Elliott. And that's going to be Smith rounding second. He's going to be on his way to third. The throw in is going to get past the cutoff man and go all the way to Saravo on the third base line. And that's going to bring runners to the corners with one away. Just a good piece of hitting there by Brooks Lee and good base running by Smith as he picks up the ball right off the bat and goes first to third. Now a dangerous hitter coming to the plate in Keegan. A dangerous hitter, Dominic Keegan. One of the hot, the third baddest high, uh, batting average, third highest batting average on the team at 293. Spent last summer in the FCBL, which was one of the most consistent hitters. That 293 average is compiled of 12 hits. 
including five home runs. But Shoney pulls it back, but it's a called strike anyway. 0-1 now the count. Keegan's going to be a catcher for the Red Sox tonight. The Red Sox wearing their all-white jerseys. Beautiful looking jerseys, really. Is They have the Red Sox logo on the heart. Navy lettering and numbering. Also some the sides of the jerseys also in Navy. Keegan last summer with the Nashua Silver Knights in the FCBL batted 317 with eight home runs in just 32 ball games. So in one of every four games, Keegan was hitting a home run while batting 317. 1-1. That one's hit up the middle. That's going to get down for a base hit. Run's going to score as Lee is going to hold up at second base. That's an RBI single for Dom Keegan. It's a good piece of hitting by Keegan as that's three balls in the middle, Lincoln. Three balls in a row, rather, hit up the middle. So they're timing up Saravo pretty well. That's the indication early. Red Sox now with an early 1-0 lead. And Chase Luttrell steps to the plate. Luttrell going to be in right field, sporting the red stirrups with his jersey. Saravo comes set. Runners up once again on first and second. One out. First pitch, misses outside, ball one. One ball and no strikes to count. He's having a little bit of trouble getting a feel for his off-speed pitches early on is Saravo. See if he can work through that. We've seen quite a few of those off-speed pitches so far. Miss up high, he leaves them hanging. That fastball misses inside, ball two. That'll prompt a mound visit from Raffelli, the catcher, and can be tough for a pitcher. Now, this is probably Saravo's fourth different catcher or so. So you've seen five different catchers with Hyannis this season. So he's had a few different guys behind the plate for him. So they're just getting used to him, what Saravo likes to throw in certain counts. Rafelli doing a good job tonight. Definitely not an easy thing for a pitcher to adjust to new catchers. And the same for these catchers, guys coming in and out on the pitching staff and having to learn brand new signs every day for what pitchers like to throw can be a tough task. Latrell at six foot one, one ninety five, the junior at Long Beach State, as the two zero misses high, three balls and no strikes to count. Once again, if you're just now joining us, Lincoln Revel alongside Austin Akuta here from Merrill Red Wilson Field, better known as Red Wilson Field. As we are underway, we're in the home stretch of games, excluding tonight's game. We only have four games left this season after today. Mm. The 3-0, fouled off. The green light on 3-0 early on in this ball game. I like it. It's a good situation for it. Runners on first and second. You have three consecutive batters with a hit off Saravo, so you're definitely expecting that fastball. Now 3-1, he might have to go back to the fastball again as he's had a little bit of trouble with that off-speed stuff. Count now at 3-1. Saravo comes home with it. High fastball. That's popped straight up in the air. It's going to be Mann heading over into towards foul territory, and Saravo's going to call him off as he makes the grab for out number two. That thing just drifted back into play as Luke Mann had started to the his right of the third base foul line and had to come back into play, but Saravo was just standing where it ended up, so he makes the call. You never want your pitcher to have to catch it, but in that situation it just came right to him where he was camped, so... They'll take it. That's a big out number two in and out that keeps runners at first and second. That's exactly what you needed if you're Adrian Saravo on the mound. It is a pretty windy day here from Red Wilson Field as the Stars and Stripes above the scoreboard out in left field is wrapped around the pole. Still waving out towards center field. It was aggressively blowing out in bat, uh, batting practice as baseballs were jumping over the fence. We had a lot of guys standing on the other side of the fence to field them. Maybe see a couple of long balls here tonight. As for the Red Sox, all but three of their batters have at least one home run. 1-0, swung on and missed, evening the count. It's a good pitch by Saravo coming back in the zone, finding his spot. Now if he can get that breaking ball on the outside part of the plate, see if he can get Huff to chase something out of the zone here. Not a bad spot to throw it. 
Cody Huff now in the right-handed box for his first at-bat. Saravo brings home the 1-1. Breaking ball misses down low. A good spot there. Just couldn't get Huff to chase it as that brings the count to 2-1. and one. Good thing here with two away and runners on first and second. Luke Mann third can go the short way or in the middle they can go the short way to second as well. So got a chance for an out at third, second, or first. All three bags are hot. Ms. Saravo takes a look over at second. Brings home the 2-1. Popped up and fouled off out of play. Two and two. Huff on the season with one home run, 18 hits in 91 at bats compiling a 198 average. He's ready to go with this pitch in the right-handed box. Saravo brings the tiebreaker home. Breaking ball misses outside. Full count, three and two now. It's a good idea to go to that breaking ball on 2-2, two -two, but unfortunately it was too far outside for Huff to even think about chasing. But now 3-2-2 two -two away, the runners will be in motion, so a ball to the gap could be very dangerous here. Sarvo's got to keep this one in the zone and make it a competitive pitch, though. A big pitch early on in the game as Saravo comes set. The flag now free from the pole as it waves out towards center field. The full count. That's a long drive out towards left. That's heading back near the wall, and that is gone. A three-run home run for Cody Huff as the Red Sox extend their lead now to four to nothing here in the top in the bottom of the first. Yeah, the wind blowing out. Huff has a good swing, and he got a fastball on the inside part of the plate that he hit really well to left field, and obviously the elements of Red Wilson Field help a bit, and a, t a pitch that at McKeon Park, Lincoln. Saravo can probably make and live with because that's probably a, a fly ball to Hardigan, but like I said, that's a pitch that here at Red Wilson Field on a day like today is going to carry out of the ballpark. After that three-run long ball, Drew Bowser is going to step to the plate at first base. Bowser, the freshman at Stanford. Standing at six foot four, 212 pounds. First pitch is a called strike, bringing the count to 0-1. This is a back-to-back -back starts now for Sarava with four earned runs in his previous five starts. The most runs he had allowed was one. A little bit of trouble here late in the season, but still a good season for Adrian nonetheless. Ball misses up high, brings the count now even at one. Bowser not unfamiliar to wearing red, white, and navy jerseys as he played for the Played for Team USA's under-18 team in 2019. Swings at that 1-1 one, one pitch. Brings the count now to 1-2. and two. That's the breaking ball, and that's the spot where you want it for Saravo. Heading towards that outside corner as it starts over the plate. Looks very enticing off the hand, but as it dips away, it's impossible to hit. Great pitch. 1-2. Swung on and missed. And that will end the first inning. The Red Sox take an early 4-0 lead thanks to a three-run shot from Cody Huff. We'll be back for the second inning on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network.
I'm Luke Mann, third baseman from University of Missouri, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Nick Romano set to start us off here in the top of the second inning, followed by Kyle Ball and Mitch Hardigan as Romano watches that first pitch go by for strike one. 0-1 oh now the count. 4-5-6 due up for Hyannis. A good chance for the Harbor Hawks to respond here. Adam Meyer back on the mound for the Red Sox as he brings the 0-1 home. That one's hit back up the middle. That's going to get through for a base hit as Romano reaches first to open up the second inning. Nice job by Romano. He stays on the breaking ball, doesn't try to do too much with it, and just shoots it back up the middle for a base hit. He's had some of the best swings on this team the last couple of weeks. He's done a good job hitting to all fields, Lincoln, and really knows how to not try to overswing or do too much, really just takes what the pitcher gives him and does a good job of reaching base to start the inning. Center fielders in today's game are getting quite a bit of action here early. Four out of five of the hits in today's, in today's game so far have all gone to center field. And oddly enough, they don't have an out there yet. No put outs in center. Just a few hits up the middle. That's going to bring Kyle Ball up to the plate as that one misses low. Count moves to 1-0. and oh. Ball in last night's game against the Falmouth Commodores and did 1-for-4 on 1-for-5, that is. He had a single in that 1-for-5 outing. The 1-0. The Misses, count moves now to two balls and no strikes. Good hitter's count here for Kyle Ball. 2-0, and oh. we'll see if Meyer comes back with the fastball. He's been in the zone early on. Meyer from the right-handed side. Fastball, that one's chopped and fouled. That bounces straight off of home plate and goes very much into foul territory as that rolls just past the Red Sox dugout. one a couple different places you can go here if you're Meyer. And Meyer ends up going over to first and they got him on the pickoff move. Romano got a little bit too far off of first base as he goes down on first for out number one. Well Meyer was from the from the stretch he had been looking in at the signs and as he glanced over Romano was pretty good ways off of first and that's a good pickoff move. Just a real good move over there. The Harbor Hawks going to have to be alert of that one. Very good fast move there as that pitch misses up high. Three and one now they count the ball. Helicopter flying overhead. Is that our flyover for tonight's game? <laughs> Unofficial flyover? Oh, yeah. Our first one of the year. Yeah. A little late. Three and one. Chopped over to short. Lee's going to pick that up. The throw on the run is in time for out number two. A good play there from Lee at short. Ball just gets on top of that one just a bit. Right fielder, number 28, Mitchell Harding. Harbor Hawks putting the ball in play this inning, which is good to see. Continue to put it in play and good things will happen. Now with two away, Mitch Hardigan steps up to the plate. We were supposed to see Hardigan a little bit later in the lineup, but due to a last minute substitution, He's now in the six hole. As the 1-0 comes in, that's ripped through to second. That's off of Hoffman. He's going to pick that up. The throw over to first is not in time. Hardigan beats it out for an infield single. As I just said, Lincoln, good things happen when you put the ball in play. He hits it hard enough to force Hoffman to have to make a tough play off of it as it kind of took a bounce and hit off of him. And with Hardigan speed, and once that ball is bobbled, it's hard to recover and get him out. And it's going to go down as an error. Oh. Was in front of Hoffman. And unfortunately for him, not able to make a play. It was in front of Hoffman. I figured it was a little bit too hard to be considered really routine. We've seen a couple of hard hit ground balls that ended up going off of them, but ended up turning out to be hits. But that one's going to go down as an error. So now... Which comes into Taylor and somehow called a strike. I don't know. Taylor pulled his bat back. It missed up high. Oh, the umpire says it was right down the middle, apparently. It almost hit him in the head, I thought. Yeah, it did. It, it looked a, like it. An interesting play for that to be a called strike. Trent Taylor at the plate. 
orange tape on both of his wrists. He shows bunt and pulls back. That one not called a strike. Well, at this point with two away in the inning, Taylor's bunting for a hit, so he has good enough speed to do it. He just can't afford something back to the pitcher in this situation. Pickoff move over to first, not in time. Hardigan is back in. One ball, one strike, and two outs. Harbor Hawks trailing four to nothing after an eventful first inning from the Red Sox. The one one. Chopper down the third base side. That could be trouble. That's going to be barehanded by Lou. The throw to first is not going to be in time. Both runners will extend as Hardigan now standing on second base and Taylor in with an infield single. And what a play though by Lou over at third base to even barehand that. He picked it up on a hop with his bare hand and attempted to make a play. Now it's too high of a chopper and too far up the line for him to have any shot at the speedy Taylor, but for him to feel that cleanly with his bare hand shows great hand-eye coordination. And a perfectly placed, although short, it was a perfectly placed base hit from Taylor. He was he chopped that one off of the plate and was able to roll that down the third base side. And he saw his speed there. He beat out the throw. Great bit of hitting there is now Joey Raffelli steps in at the plate. A catcher, he watches that one go by for ball one. Raffelli once again making his first start of the season at the plate. We've seen some good swings from him in his limited appearances. Takes a hefty swing at that 1-0 pitch, but can't find it. One and one, now the count with two away. Yeah, Raffelli, one of his one of his very first at-bats for the Harbor Hawks. He almost had his first home run of the season. Unfortunately, that one went about 50 yards to the left of the third base foul line. The one one is fouled off, bringing the count now to one and two. Meyer been relying heavily on his fastball the last couple of at bats. Let's see where he goes to Raffelli here. One two. A lot of pitchers will go with their breaking ball, but he's gotten a couple fastballs by him. A couple of different ways you can go here. Wind feels good. It does. Very <laughs> nice, cool breeze. It's it's a good match to the what was a hot day starting us off and then that cool breeze coming in and cooling everybody off. As Meyer brings home the one two, breaking ball. A great eye there from Raffelli. He didn't phase him as that evens the count at two. So the breaking ball there, now to make it two two Lincoln, a good spot to try to jam him again with an inside fastball, I think. Two balls, two strikes and two outs the count. Raffelli with the bat on his shoulder, brings it up and grounds that one down the third base side. Will stay even at two and two. Raffelli knew where he was gonna go with that pitch and was all over it, just so ahead of it. And he roped it down the third baseline foul. That's a hard hit ball. Raffelli with a chance for an RBI here that can help the Harbor Hawks start pecking away at that four run lead. That's Hardigan standing over at second base, Trent Taylor now on first. Meyer comes set, ready with the encore. 2-2. Two -two. Misses outside, three balls and two strikes to count. Good take by Raffelli, putting up a really tough at bat here and 3-2, two, two away. Runners will be in motion on the pitch, Lincoln. And there's good speed on the bases with Hardigan at second and the very quick Trent Taylor at first. Caden Rose on deck two here. Good spot for Hyannis. The payoff, runners go, misses inside. That's gonna load the bases. Great at bat by Raffelli. The best at bat we've seen so far in this game. Was down early in that count. So the foul off a tough pitch and worked the count. And that's what, it's a pro at bat there from Raffelli. Shows why he belongs on this Harbor Hawk team. And a big spot for the guy who was playing in his last game with Hyannis this season. Caden Rose now at the plate. He'll be leaving after today's game. Be something if he could come through here in his last game. First pitch to him, misses up high. Ball one, one and oh the count. Rose this season, 195 average with 17 hits, including one home run. The 1 0. -oh. High fly ball, that's heading towards foul territory out and that's gonna land just out of play into the crowd. Just get under that one. Luckily for Rose it escapes and 
heads out of play and Caden Rose, the Alabama outfielder slash infielder who Taylor Farmer, our sideline reporter, interviewed before the game. And that was another terrific interview by Taylor. You get some great insight from Caden on what it's like to be in the Cape League for a full season and how much he enjoyed his time here in Hyannis. Definitely check that out on our YouTube page. The 1-1 one -one coming in. A breaking ball that was left hanging as that almost went into the head of Rose. He was able to avoid it, 2-1. and one. After a sharp first inning and a good start to this second inning, Meyer has lost his control a little bit. An error by Hoffman at second has allowed this inning to extend a single and now a walk, and now that's going to prompt a mound visit. A good time for one, I think. Now the bullpen for the Red Sox is still quiet. No action out there as of yet. Harrocks with the bases loaded once again as Caden Rose sitting with a 2-1 count. Rose has been able to find base quite a few times, a 320 on base percentage. We'll see if he can find a way on base here. He's ahead of the count just a bit. Meyer ready to go after that mound visit concludes. That's Keegan back behind the plate. 2-1. Swing and a miss, two balls and two strikes. Once again, the count with two away. It's the second 2-2 two -two count of this inning, of course. The last 2-2 two -two count did later on result in a walk from Raffelli. Here's the tiebreaker. Chopped over to short. It's going to be picked up by Lee. The throw to second is in time. They're going to get the short out as that will end the top half of the second. The Red Sox escape a jam as they head to the bottom of the second, leading 4 to nothing on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Back here, bottom half of the second, coming up on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Lincoln Revel once again alongside Austin Dakota here from Red Wilson Field, where the Harbor Hawks are battling the YD Red Sox. Red Sox currently lead four to nothing into this bottom of the second inning. Adrian Saravo back on the mound for the Harbor Hawks as he gives the nod, brings home the first pitch to Briley Knight, and it is going to be down low for ball one. Knight out in center field getting his First at bat of the game, Red Sox went through seven of their nine hitters in the first inning, ended up scoring four runs on four hits. And that one lined and threw four base hit in between first and second. That's going to roll into right field where it's scooped up by Johnson. That's going to be a leadoff single for Briley Knight here in the second. Good piece of hitting by Knight. He timed that pitch really well. It's good for the Red Sox as they get their leadoff man aboard. Red Sox already with five hits. Just through that, that 
first inning and leading into the second inning as Knight now moves to one for one. Zach Liu, the nine hole hitter, now at the plate in the right handed box. Saravo comes set, takes a look over at first. A breaking ball much slower than most breaking balls that we've seen from Saravo, but it's in for strike one. The slider's typically around 79. That one looks closer to 70 and 79. Sometimes you slow it down a bit and try to mm -hmm. work on your location. It's a good pitch there to start off. The one comes home, runner goes. That one popped up and fouled out of play, 0-2. Right, Knight's gonna have to retreat back to first. He ended up getting a pretty good jump there on first base. He could have beaten out the throw. It would have been a close play if Raffelli would have gotten the throw down. Raffelli with his all red catcher's gear back in his crouch as the count moves to 0-2. Sarava with the pitch. Spiked in the dirt. Good stop there from Raffelli, bringing the count to 1-2. and two. Sarava likes to throw that slider late in counts. 1-2 still, he's ahead on Lou and he could go back to it here. Saravo has struck out 19 while only walking nine this season. Looking for strikeout number 20 here as the one, two, swung on and missed, throw down to first is not in time. As that is going to be out number one here as Lou goes to 0 for one. That's a big out number one for Adrian Saravo. Now you come back to the top of the order with one away and just the runner on first. That's a more manageable situation for Saravo. And that was actually strikeout number 22 on the season for Saravo. He's got three so far tonight. Wyatt Hoffman back on at the plate as that one gets past, and that's going to go out of play. As that can, that's going to be a an extra base for Briley Knight, who now stands on second base. Yeah, luckily, he was retreating to first, so he only gets awarded second. As if he was on his way to second, he'd be awarded third. So very fortunate situation for the Harbor Hawks that he doesn't move all the way to third. Very much going so. back to the bag. Yeah, the field of play, apart from foul territory, not a lot of playing field as that one hits low. Runner goes down to third, and the throw is not in time. Knight's going to be in at third safely with one out. Good speed by Knight. We saw him attempt to steal second earlier in the at-bat or earlier in the inning. After ball was fouled off, he had to go back and now advancing to third. So good speed, and now 90 feet away is the fifth runner, fifth run for the Red Sox, and we're still in the bottom of the second. Count at 1-0. Oh. Sarava with the pitch. Fouled off, evening the count, 1-1. One one. Like I said, not a lot of playing field here apart and once you get to foul territory, just past both dugouts, then the fences go away, netting goes away, and you're left with nothing separating the crowd from the playing field here. It's definitely uh, going to be alert down the left and right field lines of those bleachers just past the dugout. One and one is fouled off, bringing the count to one and two now. Back to back pitches and a similar result as Hoffman fouled both of them off. See where Saravo goes one, two. I think he might go back to that breaking ball. It's worked well and hit in these counts. We'll see what happens here. Raffelli giving the signal. Saravo nods and comes set. The one, two. Grounded down to third. Man's going to come home. They have him in a rundown now. That's Knight in between third and home. Play at home plate is going to be tagged out by Saravo. Meanwhile, Hoffman is going to extend over to second while the defense for the Harbor Hawks was otherwise occupied. Terrific play by Luke Mann. A ball to his left. He spins and makes a nice throw to home to get Knight. And that's a huge out number two, which erases that runner on third. Now, Hoffman does advance to second, but that's a trade off that you will make. And now two away and no worse off as the lead remains at four to nothing. 
Tanner Smith now at the plate, who's the designated hitter. He's one for one with a single in the first. Have to be careful with Smith. He's got some good pop with three homers on the year. First pitch from Saravo misses, ball one. In addition to those three home runs, 18 RBI Lincoln, so he can definitely drive in runners even when he's not putting the ball over the fence. Saravo ready with the 1-0. This is inside, two balls. And no strikes now the count. Tanner Smith from the University of Oregon, sporting the number 29 for the Red Sox here tonight. Sarava brings home the 2-0. and oh. Swing and a miss there, 2-1 and one now the count. Not a bad view here from Red Wilson Field. You've got trees just beyond center field that go on out towards the right field area. Little bit, of, little bit of an open space. Looks like a soccer field down there past left field where some fans have chosen that area for their seating for tonight's game. Looks like a soccer field. We got field hockey goals out there. There's a football field behind us at this school here. And Yarmouth, I believe it's the high school. Got a neighborhood in right field too, so a couple of those houses, you have the homeowners sitting on their own lawns to watch this game. Not hey, a bad spot. Yeah, can Walk you out your back deck and got a baseball game going on. I'm sure they get some souvenirs. I know plenty of them were skipping up near the house in batting practice. Mm. Can't imagine how many broken windows they've probably gone through. <laughs> It's a good shot. It's probably about 420 to the house itself. So, look, man, could, that's in the man zone. It is. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the power to hit one there. Count at two and two. Our home plate umpire Tyler Bullock called strike three a little bit early. Count evens out at two balls and two strikes with two away. The pitch from Saravo. Breaking ball that's off the glove and actually off the foot of Smith as he's going to get a free ride down to first. Hoffman tried to sneak his way over to third, but he'll remain at second. Now, not the worst thing that can happen. Obviously, you don't want to let a guy go with two strikes, but now you bring in the four set, the three bags. So a good chance here for the Harbor Hawks to get an out in. Not have to worry about making a play across the diamond. Runners now first and second with two away. Still nothing really to worry about. You just have to get that third out here, a little ground ball, fly ball, any way you can. All bags are now hot for Brooks Lee, who is stepping into that left-handed box. One for one with the single in the first. Now Lee, as I mentioned, the only switch hitter on this Red Sox roster. He lines that one out towards center. That's going to drop for a base hit. Elliott's going to chunk that one over towards third. The play coming in is going to get off the glove of man. That's going to roll out towards the dugout, and another runner is going to come home. The play at the home plate is not in time. That's going to score two more runs on a single from Brooks Lee. Well, that ball was hit well to center field, and Elliott makes a strong throw all the way to third, but unfortunately, it goes by Luke Mann. He makes 12, an athletic Dominic effort to try to get that one home to Rafa Rafelli, but not in time, and unfortunately, six runs now home for the Red Sox. Lee now two for two, both of those singles going into center field. Came into the game batting 4-11, so that average will only get higher. Now runner on second, the Red Sox leading six to nothing as Saravo comes set. That first pitch down the heart of the zone, brings the count now to 0 and 1. The Stars and the Stripes are blowing out, this time towards, more towards left field now. Now it's way, blowing every which way from that left field area over to center field. I've already seen a home run there tonight as that 0-1 a check swing. From this point of view, it looked like he went, but they're not going to 
not going to check down to first as that evens the count at one and one. Sarava with the pitch. Outside, two and one now the count. This is Dominic Keegan at the plate, who's also one for one with a single. Drove in a run on that single. His ninth RBI of the season. Keegan leaning back in his stance in that right-handed box. As Saravo comes home. He chops that one over the head of Saravo over to second. That's going to be picked up by Taylor. Throw to first is in time. That's out number three. That will end the second inning. The Red Sox add on two. They lead six to nothing heading to the third inning on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. I'm Hunter Furtado, number five, left-hand pitcher from Wake Forest. I'm Austin Wallace, number 18, left-handed pitcher from the University of Texas. And you're listening to the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Clark Elliott starting us off here in the top half of the third inning. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Watch that first pitch go by. That misses inside for ball one. Harbor Hawks currently trailing 6 to nothing against the YD Red Sox. Adam Meyer back on the rubber. He's in his windup as the 1-0 comes home. Swung on and missed, bringing the count now even at 1-1. One one. And Meyer not afraid to throw that breaking ball or that changeup as well when he's behind in counts. He goes 1-0 to Elliott and comes back with the changeup, and it's a tough pitch to hit. That pitch. A called strike, bringing the count now to 1-2. and two. Elliott came into tonight's game with the highest average in the Cape League. At 360. Of course, it's gone down just a tad with that strikeout in the first. The 1 2 coming in. Swing and a miss. Strike three. As Elliott moves to 0 for 2 now. And Dom Johnson comes up with one away. Now batting, right fielder number six. A couple of good Dominic pitches from Meyer. Johnson. As he's settled in a bit. He had a really good first inning, a little bit of a shaky second. A error over at second didn't help him, but that's a good start for Meyer here in the third. Yeah, the Red Sox were able to get out of quite a pickle in that second inning. Bases were loaded, but they were left loaded. As with one away, Johnson watches that one go over his head. He has to duck out of the way. So that brings the count to 1-0. and Wind picking up here, blowing out towards center. 
Trees dancing every which way out in the background of the playing field, dead center field. 1-0 for Meyer coming in. This is outside, bringing the count to 2-0 now. Johnson out in right field had a couple of singles in yesterday's game as he lines that one. Barehanded grab by the third base coach. A beautiful play there. Nice play by Travis Poole, the hitting coach for the Harbor Hawks. Count moves now to two and one. Johnson with those orange and blue Franklin batting gloves as he ends up going around at that pitch and it ended up hitting him, but it's going to be a called strike. Haven't seen that very much. You don't see that every day, that's no. for sure. Not this season, nor in my life have I seen that very much. Count now evens out at two balls and two strikes with one away. Pitch comes in. Lined and through for a base hit in between first and second as Dom Johnson is going to reach with a single. He's now one for two. Good piece of hitting by Johnson. He stays on that pitch, takes it the other way as he hits the all fields really well, continues to do it in that at bat. That's going to bring Luke Mann to the plate. He is 0 for 1. He had a ground out over to second to end the first inning. Came into tonight's game tied for second in the Cape League with RBIs. Has 24 RBIs up to date. Meyer ready with the first pitch that misses high, one ball and no strikes. Man approaching batting 300. He's having himself a terrific season at 295 Lincoln and for a guy who didn't get off to the hottest start, his bat has been scorching the last couple of weeks. Takes a hefty swing at that breaking ball. Can't find it. One and one the count. In the just the second half of the season, Mann has blasted five doubles, four homers. He's got 28 hits on the season. The one one breaking ball that gets past Keegan. Johnson is going to come to second now as the Harbor Hawks have a man in scoring position with one away. Man, as Austin mentioned, his average almost to 300, his on-base percentage almost at 400. His OBP is at 389 coming to tonight's game. 2-1. This is outside. 3-1 and one now the count. 3-1. It's a count where Meyer might have to go with a fastball with Johnson on second. Man might be sitting fastball and he could do some damage to it, but with first base open, if he feels he wants to work around Luke Mann, that is a possibility. Pitches hit sky high. That's going to stay in the infield. A couple of infielders coming underneath it as that is Lee having to move a little bit more over to his left than he would have liked as that is out number two. Comes back with the fastball in the outer half of the plate. Mann just popped it up, unfortunately. Good out number two for Meyer. Two away, runner on second. Nick Romano steps up to the plate. He's one for one with a single, the first hit for the Harbor Hawks in tonight's game. Unfortunately, he ended up getting picked off over at first, not long after getting that hit. That pickoff actually started off that second inning where the Harbor Hawks ended up leaving the bases loaded as that first pitch is swung on and missed to Romano. 0-1 oh, the count. Looks like a slider that Meyer throws. Tough to tell, but it had some movement to it low in the zone as it came across the plate. Good pitch to start off a count. 0-1 oh, now the count. Meyer with a couple of looks over at second before coming home. Misses high, Two, uh, one and a one now the count. Saw Romano hit a ball to opposite field earlier in the ball game for his hit. So 
another guy who can hit to all fields really well. We'll see what he tries to do here. One one. Got to put a ball in play with two away. Mount of the twin brother of Ryan as the runner goes from second. The throw down to third is not in time. Johnson is in safely. Meanwhile, that one was a called strike, so that'll move the count now to one and two. Johnson has terrific speed, and what makes him such a dynamic player as well is that's his ninth stolen base on the year. It's only been caught one time. Johnson now 90 feet away from scoring that first run for the Harbor Hawks. Just the second base runner of the game so far to find third. 1-2 comes in. It's chopped over towards short, picked up by Lee. Throw in from the gap is in time for out number three as that is going to end the top half of the third inning. Harbor Hawks go down no runs on one hit and one stranded. As we head to the bottom of the inning, trailing 6-0 on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hi, my name is Gary Calhoun, and I'm the manager of the Hyannis Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to the Hyannis Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Chase Luttrell is going to start us off here in the bottom half of the third inning as the count now moves to one ball and no strikes. Got a new pitcher on the mound for the Harbor Hawks as that one is lined and through for a base hit. That's going to be a leadoff single for Chase Luttrell here in the bottom half of the third. Good piece of hitting by Latrell, jumping on the fastball and leadoff single. From Scottsdale. This is Evan Webster on the mound now for the Harbor Hawks. Webster at six foot four, two hundred twenty pounds from the University of Louisville. We last saw him at Katuit on the twenty eighth in that two to one loss. He was terrific. Three innings, just one hit, one walk, and no runs allowed. That one's driven out towards right center field, nearing the wall, and that is gone. A two-run shot for Cody Huff, his second home run of the game. And the Red Sox now lead it eight to nothing. Well, a little bit of a different start oh here for Webster than that game against Katuit, as I was just wrapping up just talking about his score with Soding. Uh, Back-to-back hard hit balls, and this YD team has a scorching hot offense tonight. And a great start for them, 8-0. 
Huff had one home run coming into tonight's now game. He's now moved that to three two. with a two home run night. It's five RBI on the night. Came in with eight RBI, now 13. That first pitch to Drew Bowser. Ends up as a ball. That one hit Raffelli, so we had to take an extra second before tossing that ball back to Webster. 1-0 and the count. Wind now blowing heavily out towards that left out towards that left field side. Everybody's wondering if that pitch hit Bowser in the box. It kind of looked like it did, but no call came in as the count at one and zero. Pitch is a called strike at the knees. One and one now the count. Good pitch by Webster. He hits the glove of Raffelli, which was set up at the knees and. It's a good strike to get in the zone. Webster coming in from the windup, the 1-1. One, one. This is down low, two balls and one strike to count. The Red Sox so far with eight runs, eight hits, and one error. The Harbor Hawks with no runs on three hits and two errors so far. Count at two balls and one strike. Pitch from Webster, swung on and missed. You need to count at two and two. The pitch didn't have a lot of movement on it, but it was slower than his usual fastball, so. Not sure if he just slowed down his fastball, but it brings home the two two. That breaking ball spikes in the dirt. Three and two now the count. Three two, he's been able to locate the fastball quite well. Unfortunately, the breaking pitch yet to catch up. We'll see if he has to go back to the fastball on three and two. This will tell you a lot about the outing. I want to hit over towards short. Ball's going to come up with it. Throw to first, high throw from to Romano. He ends up grabbing it for out number one as Bowser goes down with the 6-3 put out. He goes back to the fastball and Webster's located the fastball really well as he does another good job there finding the zone with it and making it a tough pitch to hit. It's just the breaking pitches are struggling a bit here. He's only faced three batters. We'll see if he can get those working now. Good chance to do it against a lefty. One and one, or one out now as Briley Knight comes in 1-4-1. He had a single in the second, ended up reaching third. He almost came home before he ended up in a rundown. Ended up getting tagged out at home by Adrian Saravo. Grounds that one over to second. Taylor's going to pick that up. Throw to first on a hop is in time for out number two. Great bounce back here by Webster. He allowed a single, then a two-run home run, and that's back-to-back -back ground outs. He seems to have settled in a bit. Always tough eight, after giving up a home run to bounce back quickly and get your composure, but good job by Webster to regain that composure and find the zone. Two retired now, Zach Liu is at the plate. He's 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Webster with the first pitch. Called strike at the chest. Bringing the count to 0 and 1. And already, Webster's ready with the 0 1. That one barely missing on the outside. 1 and 1 now the count. Lou from Cal State Fullerton. She watches that one go, ball two. Lou overall batting 125. He's got eight hits, including a double. He's also got five RBI so far this season. We saw him before, earlier in this season. Very good glove at third base. 3-1. Finds a zone, bringing the count to full. Three balls and two strikes now. Big pitch coming up here for Webster. Went back to the fastball earlier on 3-2. We'll see if that's where he goes in this at bat. Here's the pitch. That one's fouled off the fastball. He's going to head just out of play. A catch by a man wearing a Penn State shirt. That'll make our producer Matt Noah very happy. Went with the fastball on 3-2. We'll see where he goes now. The payoff. Misses high, ball four. Another fastball. That was up and away as Lou is going to reach base on a walk. It's a good at bat by Lou spoiling Webster's best pitch Second on that 3-2 fastball three, that he Wyatt fouled Hoffman. back. And he forced Webster to have to come in again with another tough competitive pitch, but unfortunately he misses the zone and 
A good two out walk there from Lou. Now that walk issued to Lou, the very first walk of the night for the Harbor Hawks. There's also been a runner hit by pitch, so we've had two free bases given as that one's lined down the third base side. That's going to drop fair. That's going to be picked up by Hardigan. Runners are going to add one base, but stay put as Lou extends to second and Hoffman in, in with a two-out single. Yeah, Hoffman was out Tanner. in front of that. It was on the outside part of the plate. He hits it off the end of the bat, but pulls it so much, and it's a soft liner where nobody's playing it. YD Red Sox looking to put together a little bit of a two-out rally. Runners on first and second. What would be an infield fly rule if there were not two away here as Tanner Smith steps up. He's reached base twice and reached home twice on a single, and he got hit by a pitch. First pitch, not a full swing there from Smith, but he goes around enough for a strike. Count moves to 0-1. He turned his shoulders almost completely the way around, but he's had he started wanting to swing, but I don't think he wanted to by the end of it. The one from Webster. Swung on and fouled off. And they count to 0-2 now. O2, you're ahead. You definitely go back to a breaking ball here. Smith with such a hard swing. His hands, his top hand actually came off of the bat. He ended up swinging through and finishing that swing with just one hand. The O2 fouled off. Keeps the count at 0 and 2. Good breaking ball there from Webster. Got him reaching on it. Nice job by Smith to hold back enough to foul it off. 0-2, I would go back to that pitch again or an inside change. No need to go back to the fastball just yet. I'd try to get another one low in the zone, try to get him to chase. Webster now with the 0-2 once again. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. Strike three and out number three as that's going to end the third inning. Red Sox add two more. As they lead 8 to nothing, heading to the fourth on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hi, I'm Agent Saravo, right-handed pitcher for Highlands Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Right. Kyle Ball starting us off here in the fourth inning. He's 0 for 1 on the night as uh, he hits that first pitch well into the crowd. People do ducking and dodging every which way to avoid that one. Count goes to 0 and 1. A couple of little kids in the vicinity of that ball. And luckily, everybody got out of the way and everybody survived that one. You got to be alert. No phone usage in those bleachers. Definitely not, no. Oh, one pitch misses high. One and one the count. Ball's at shortstop. Meanwhile, Adam Meyer back on the mound for the Red Sox for his fourth inning of work. 
He's been good so far. Just four base runners allowed, no runs, three strikeouts. The 1-1. One, one. Misses low. 2-1 and one the count. Now 2-1. Kyle Ball could be sitting fastball, but Meyer has a good enough breaking pitch that he can still locate it for a strike. 2-1. Chopped over to short. Lee's going to pick that up, take a quick hop, and throw to first for out number one. He put the ball in play. Not a bad swing by Ball. Just, I think, a better pitch there from Meyer to get him to roll over. Ball with his second 6-3 put out of the night as he's 0 for 2 now. Mitch Hardigan stepping up to the plate. Hardigan in left field, reached on an error in his last appearance. Had that hard, hard ground ball over to second that Hoffman ended up trying to come up with, but it ended up going off of his chest and rolling away from him. One grounded over to first. That's going to be picked up by Bowser. Called foul at the last second by Brandon Johnson, the first base umpire. Is that it's going to bring the count now to 0-2. And he's right on the line, so had a good view of it. No argument from either first base coach Gary Calhoun or Bowser at first. So Hardigan will retrieve his bat at the plate and try again. That was a very fortunate bounce there. It was extremely close to that foul line. The 0-2 pitch coming in. This is outside, ball one. Hardigan from FAU. There's the one, two, hit over between first and second. That's gonna be picked up on the backhand by Bowser. He'll toss it over to Meyer, who steps on first for out number two. That's just a great fundamental play between Bowser and Meyer as Meyer gets over from the mound and Second covers the bag with eight. ease and a nice easy Over. flip at the chest from Bowser and it's a ni nice out number two. Meyer looks to have a quick inning. Now Ta Trent Taylor now at the plate. One for one with a single. He ended up reaching second base before that second inning ended, leaving three runners stranded for the Harbor Hawks. The Hawks looking to Break the shutout. They're currently down eight to nothing as that first pitch, a breaking ball misses for ball one. Why these bats are just hot. They came out of the gate with the four runs in the bottom of the first. They have scored in the two innings since, so good start for them. Five out of those eight hits or five out of those eight runs are a huge part of Cody Huff's night, who is two for two with a three run home run and a two run home run. Two balls and no strikes now. The count to Taylor. Go ahead. It's that one off of the handle of his bat. Looks like it's chipped a little bit. Oh. He's going to head on and grab a new one. And Yep. Yeah, that's broken. Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. It does not seem too happy, this Trent Taylor. It's not fully apart, but it is. There's a good hunk of it that is chipped, especially on that handle. We'll see if he has any more. <laughs> One is chunked to him from the dugout. Here you go. That's a pretty piece of lumber, a black black barrel with a light colored handle, a simple yet very pretty piece. Count now at two and one. I wonder how many of these bats each batter, each player brings to the Cape, because I know them, that. They each said they bring a boat too. About two. Two or three, and then the team gives you another two or three. Ah, okay. Taylor reaches after that one actually hits him. Ends up taking one off of the back, as that new bat ended up not being of much use in that appearance, as he's now on first for the second time tonight. Now two away, one on first. That's going to bring Joey Raffelli to the plate, who is yet to record an at-bat in tonight's game. He reached on a walk in the second. Meyer with the first pitch. Misses down low for ball one. And Raffelli put up probably the best at-bat of the game, even between both teams. He 
was down in the count, but worked his way back and drew a huge walk. Rafeli at catcher for his first start of the season. He lofts that one out towards left. That's heading back near the warning track, and that's near the wall. Looking up, and it's gone. Joey Rafeli with his first long ball of the season, and it's a two-run shot. And the Harbor Hawks are on the board, trailing eight to two. The first career hit in the Cape Cod Baseball League for Joey Raffelli is a two-run home run. How about that? Good swing put on by Raffelli, and he got that one up high and deep, and be able to get it over that wall. Nice swing by Raffelli, and that's going to feel good to get your first one and have it be a homer. Yeah, and that's where that big breeze comes into play. That one. Looked like it was going to be playable for Huff out in left field, but he just kept on trailing back and back and back, and eventually he ran out of real estate. And we saw that one fall just past the scoreboard as now Caden Rose steps up to the plate for his second appearance. Hawks are on the board with two runs, and the comeback can continue. Just continue to chip away. Can't do it yourself, so just need to continue. Each guy have a good at-bat. Rose watches that one go by, a breaking ball finding the zone for strike one, one and one the count. That's what I found most impressive about Meyer tonight is even down in counts, he throws that breaking ball and is able to locate it for a strike. It's not just a strikeout pitch for him. It might be his best pitch. Yeah, it's quite an underrated trait when you can take that breaking ball and throw it where you want and just throw it consistently for a strike no matter what the count is. Two and one the count, pitch comes in. That goes up high, that actually hits. Rose, it looks like it got him in the mouth or the nose. As he is down grasping his nose. And as he gets checked out, we're gonna take a quick break here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Caden Rose is fine. Ended up getting hit off the nose, and he's now standing on first base, ready to go as Clark Elliott is about to dig in to the box for his third appearance. It just seemed to graze him a bit across the nose. He didn't go down, but it, when you get even touched on the nose like that, it can make your eyes water up a bit. And very uncomfortable feeling, but Rose is aboard. Yeah, definitely, I bet his heart, I have a good feeling his heart probably might have skipped a beat there. That ball coming at your face. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it just barely gets him, I think, because yeah. he didn't go down at all in any real pain. It just some discomfort. Yeah, if that ball would have, if that would have hit solidly on the face, then we might still be at a break. But that first pitch coming to Clark Elliott misses for a ball. Elliott 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. He's looking for his first hit, looking to, to continue that on base streak now at 18 games. Lofts that one foul as that heads well out of play, bringing the count now to one and one. He's a good guy to have up with two outs, Lincoln. He always puts up a good at bat. We've talked about it numerous times on how successful he's been this season, but two away, a guy on first. If you're looking for a two out rally, here's somebody that can provide that for you. Elliott with 27 hits thus far as that one goes by for strike two, one and two the count. In la each of his last two at-bats, Elliott had a 1-2 count when he ended up going down swinging for those two strikeouts that he's had. We'll see if this one can go a little differently. Meyer's giving him some trouble with that inside fastball. Let's see if he goes to that pitch here. Here's the 1-2. Runner goes from first. Ball misses down low. The throw down to second. It's not going to be in time. That's going to head past Lee. Rose is going to stay at second, but he has a stolen base. Good jump there by Caden Rose as he slides in pretty easily and pretty much ahead of that throw. Yeah, I think he got enough of a jump that even if the throw was in time, he probably still would have beaten out the throw. Stolen base number seven for Caden Rose this season. 2-2, two, two, two away Lincoln. Has the hat been officially retired, we said? I think so. It has, I haven't used it in a few games. It hasn't worked for you. Maybe it will work for me. Do I, do I try? Sure, go for it. 
Two and two. Austin shaking the hat now. Misses down low. I'm one for one. I'll Maybe, retire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Retire while you're hot? No, I'm retiring, batting a thousand. <laughs> That's how I would do it, Lincoln. One for one. I'm done. Guess you could say uh, the hat was dropped, dropped like it's hot. You know. Snoop Dogg reference there as the payoff pitch comes in with two away, misses inside, ball four. And Elliott reaches base, and he now extends it, extends his streak to 19 games. Clark Elliott continues to reach base safely. Now batting number six, right fielder Dominic Good at bat by Elliott. He was down early, 1-2 in that count, Lincoln, and does a good job battling back. And now you have runners on first and second for the meet of your order, really. Johnson in the two spot, Luke Mann, the three hitter on deck. Chance for some big hits here. Johnson has a hit already. He's one for two with a single in the third. First pitch breaking ball. He takes a big swing but ends up in front of it. 0 and 1 the count. Johnson was sitting fastball on that one. He was going to jump all over a first pitch pass ball. Mm -hmm. If it was in the zone, he was just out in front of that breaking pitch. Count now at 0-1 as Meyer comes set. Kicks and comes home. Breaking ball. That one misses outside. 1-1 one one the count. Good job by Johnson to lay off it. He throws that pitch back to back to him. and Doesn't bite on that one. Johnson out in right field. Now going to Kansas State. 1-1. One, one. Misses ball two. Two one and again, Meyer. This is a situation where a lot of pitchers are going to get comfortable and try to throw that fastball because they want to get the count even. But he's a guy who has a real good breaking ball too. Count now at three and one. The wind blowing strongly out towards right field, where we know Johnson loves to hit it. He loves that opposite field. We saw. We've seen what happened in this game. If you can get the ball up in the jet stream, I guess you mm -hmm. can call it. I mean. Strong win tonight, and we have three homers already. The 3 1 is a called strike. Three balls and two strikes with two away. Well, the runners will be off on the pitch, Lincoln, and you have possibly your two fastest runners on the team. Elliott's definitely up there. So is Rose, as he has seven stolen bases, does Caden. Three and two, two away. Meyer brings the payoff. Hi, and that is ball four. Great take. That is such a tough pitch to lay off, a pitch that he throws in a pretty good spot just above the letters, and a lot of guys will chase that pitch. And what a job by Dom Johnson to lay off. You load the bases for Luke Mann, a very dangerous hitter, and that's going to at least prompt a mound visit, if not a pitching change. I think that's going to be a mound visit as somebody in the Red Sox bullpen now starts to get loose. It's going to be number 21, Ryan Wilson. Starting to throw some long toss. We'll probably see him at some point soon. Not right now. Meyer has had a successful ball game, Lincoln, at mm -hmm. 83 pitches so far. But his pitch count's getting up there. Probably his last inning of work. I wouldn't be surprised. We've usually, I don't think we've seen anybody hit that 100 pitch mark this season. We've seen a, we've seen a couple in the 90s. I don't think we've had any in the hundreds yet. Now we're at that point in the season that if if you are going to see a 100 pitch outing from somebody, it would be at this point. These players have been in the league so long enough that their arms are probably back in full shape. Yeah, it's the last week, so a lot of the guys are making their last starts too. So you can really stretch, stretch them out in the end. We have just five games left after tonight's game. Or... Four games left after tonight's game. Four games after tonight, so yes. Five including this one. So Adrian Saravo probably making his last start earlier tonight. Saravo just last night named the team MVP for twenty for the 2021 season. First Had a truly outstanding season. Very well deserving. You know, one from Meyer. Misses outside. The back pick down to third is not in time. K-1 
Caden Rose is back in safely as the count now even at one and one with two away. Rose very quick, he'll get back there without a problem. You have really good speed on the bases. This is probably your three fastest runners. Trent Taylor the fourth, he's not on base right now, but with these three, they can score. Chopped over to first, that's gonna be picked up by Bowser. He'll toss it over to first for out number three, and that's gonna end the top of the fourth inning. The Harbor Hawks add two after a two run shot from Joey Raffelli. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Harbor Hawks trail eight to two on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hi, my name is Gary Calhoun, and I'm the manager of the Hyannis Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to the Hyannis Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Brooks Lee set to start us off here for the bottom half of the fourth inning as Evan Webster digs back in on the rubber. That's going to be Brooks Lee, Dominic Keegan, and Chase Luttrell. Well, an encouraging top of the fourth for Hyannis as they get their first two runs of the ball game. Thanks to that sole, uh, two run home run, rather, from Joey Raffelli, the catcher. Good to see him get his first hit and home run in his young career here in the Cape League. Just his eighth at bat, but he makes it count. First pitch from Webster misses up high for ball one. All three batters due up are all one for two. Well, Brooks Lee actually two for two with a pair of singles. Keegan and Latrell both one for two. Lee, as I mentioned, two for two. A pair of singles. He reached home once, reached second. And that second hit on in the second inning. Count now two balls and one strike from Webster. The left-hander with the pitch. That one's lofted, and that's going to head out of play near the concession stand. Landing just past the picnic tables out there and some kids hustling for their first souvenir of the night. There's only one, I think. Oh, yeah. There were a couple that started <laughs> to run towards it, they but I guess, up. yeah. There's another. Let's see That's if anybody else, oh, goes out of play. Parking lot shot. Yeah. But in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a joke, he, he hit it over the fence. It's just the wrong, did the wrong way. Webster now with the 2-2. Pitch comes in. Ball misses just low. Bring the count now. Three balls and two strikes. It's a good spot. You just needed a boat six to eight inches higher. So you came across at the shin rather than the knee. Mm -hmm. Raffelli behind the plate, still with the little frame job, hoping that he could possibly make that one a, a good call as the payoff comes in. Once again, low as that is a full count walk to Brooks Lee to start us off. Just missing, but it is a ball just below the knee. But a good a good spot. He just got to get it up a bit. Some umpires will you'll get that call. But Bullock hasn't called it tonight. Yeah, we have a good, a good view here from our little broadcast table. We can tell up and down pretty well. Yeah. Just we, yeah in, we, in and out will be tough. In and, out, in and out is very tough. At home, we can get a good gauge of both mm. when we're up in the skybox. Yeah, the skybox actually one of the best views that I've ever seen in my broadcasting career. Count at 1-0, and coming now to Dominic Keegan. Pitch coming in. That misses. Ball two. 
Keegan one for two, a single in the first, ground out in the second. Ended up reaching home after that single in the first inning. One of four runs that came across. He was part of that three run home run from Cody Huff. 2-0 the count. Pitch comes in, and that goes off of the knee of Keegan, and he's on the ground. And there's nothing but bone on that knee, and trainers are gonna come on out and take a quick look at him. It'll take a minute to regroup here. Yeah. Hopefully he's all right. He seems just to be regrouping a bit on the ground. We're gonna take a quick break here on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. We'll be back in a moment. Now back, and Chase Luttrell is now at the plate. Dominic Keegan getting checked in the dugout after taking a ball off the knee. He's gonna have a pinch runner going on first base for him. Runners on first and second as Evan Webster brings that pitch home. He misses up high for ball one. Luttrell one for two, a single and a fly out. So far in the opposite order actually. They had that fly out in the first and a single in the third. Count at 1-0. Oh. Webster with a look over at second before delivery. That one breaking ball finds the upper part of the zone for strike one. It's going to even the count at one apiece. Now once again we are on the home stretch. We're going to have a, some alternating games at home and away. So tonight is a home game or, or an away game against the Red Sox. Tomorrow is a home game against the Red Sox. It's fouled off. One and two, now the count. See if Webster goes back to a breaking ball here. He's like to, he's like to throw that pitch in these counts where he's ahead. 0-2 oh, or 1-2. Harrocks have two home games left as the 1-2 is swung on and fouled. Comes back, with out the, of play. comes back with the breaking ball but hangs it a bit. Luckily for him was uh, not punished by Latrell. So that's a dangerous pitch, Lincoln. He came mm -hmm. across around the belt. Fortunately, Latrell ended up getting way underneath that pitch. As the count remains, one and two. Webster, the lefty with a look at second. Lee currently standing there as that one misses outside. Count now at two and two once again. If you're just joining us, Lincoln Revel sitting alongside Austin Akuta here from Red Wilson Field. The Harbor Hawks currently trailing eight to two 
against the YD Red Sox. As the 2-2 pitch comes in, that's fouled off, and we'll stay at 2-2 two two now. Ah, they're little herd of kids stumbling into the dugout, or the parking lot that is, trying to grab a souvenir. Seen Webster go fastball on one, two. We well, went breaking ball, fastball, now another breaking ball. We'll see where he goes here. He's been alternating a bit. The 2-2, two -two. another breaking ball. That one's fouled off. Trails right on it. Luckily for Webster, he buried that one enough. Good spot to change the eye level, come up and in with a fastball, I think, on the hands. Two balls, two strikes once again. Webster with the pitch. Another foul ball, and that's a fastball. Hey, tried to come up and in on him, but <laughs> Latrell able to fight it off a bit. Now you showed him the fastball. Go back to the breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Continue to move around the zone and try to win this battle. All right, so you're calling breaking ball on the outside? Uh, yes. All right, let's see what happens. Webster shakes off a couple of signs, likes what he sees now. He comes set. The pitch. Fastball at the knees, called strike three. He went outside, came at the knees, a good location for the pitch. Trefelli shifts to the outside part of the plate, sets up his glove, and Webster hits right where he ended up, right on that bottom left corner of the zone on the outside part to the lefty, and that's a really good spot. You come inside with the fastball, now you move him outside. Big out number one. Great at bat there from Latrell and Webster alike. A great battle that ended in Webster's favor. As now with one away. First strike called to Cody Huff. Huff having an electric night at the plate. Two for two with two long balls. A three run shot in the first and a two run shot in the third. Have to be careful. Very careful here. 0 and 1. Check swing. No, he didn't go. As that's going to bring the count to one and one. Double play is in order, so try to keep the ball low in the zone, get a ground out, especially to Huff, who has been damaging the baseball tonight when it's up. One and one has popped up. That's going to head out of play near the crowd. One fan tries to grab it with his hat, but he can't come to it, but he ends up scrambling after it and grabbing it with his hand. That's the key in this at bat to Huff is keep it low in the zone, Lincoln. He's already launched two on pitches up in the zone, and Webster just has to continue to bury him low, but don't get predictable. Here's the one two. Breaking ball, fouled off. Way out in front of that pitch. Why not double up here? Shade starting to creep up into the infield. Now the tallest part of Shade, now even with the pitcher's mound. Here in the broadcast table, we're now covered in shade as the sun has just creeped below the press box. That one misses in the dirt. Two and two, now the count. Comes back with the off speed in the dirt. Try to get him to chase, but Huff, when you're seeing the ball well, you lay off some of those pitches, and Huff seeing it well today. Definitely not complaining about that shade. Feels good to get out of the sun. I don't know, it's gotten a little colder here. I'm starting to get Cold a little for, chilly as that one. from Texas. <laughs> Lands just past the crowd. He's gonna, man's gonna toss it to a young fan, and he comes away with a souvenir. Lots of disappointed kids coming back to their seats. See, this is beautiful weather for me and Matt. And for you and Taylor, you might be cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is great. Yeah, Taylor's dressed for the occasion with some long sleeves and pants. I'm in a polo and shorts. As that one's hit past a diving Taylor for a base hit. That's gonna go to Elliott in center field, and that's gonna score a run for the Red Sox, who now lead nine to two. And Huff picks up RBI number six of the night. He is punishing the baseball tonight, really seeing it well. Good hit. Taylor's dressed for like January weather. <laughs> yeah. January New England jacket, <laughs> pants. Nah, ja January, January New England weather, I've always thought about wearing like two or three jackets, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. like he jeans and wool socks, something <laughs> like that. Well, some days, <laughs> wool socks, huh? Well, you don't, 
That one hit up the middle. It's going to be Ball diving for it. He steps on second for one. The throw to first gets past. Time is called as that one heads out of play. And both runners are going to advance an extra bag. That's Huff coming in Number from seven, third. And Drew Bowser now going to second. Well, a terrific play by Ball to make the stop up the middle and step on the bag to get it out, but he tried to get that throw off and make a highlight reel play to first, but unfortunately it gets by Romano, and at this field, if it gets by your first baseman, it's gonna go into the crowd and award the runners an extra base, which allows Huff to come home. It's now 10-2, to two, uh, YD. That brings Briley Knight to the plate. Knight, one for two on his line. Single in the second and ground out in the third. Holding the bat straight up as Wallace or Webster comes set. He sort of brings it back near his ears. And that's a called strike, bringing the count even at one and one. Kind of a quiet strike call there from our home plate umpire tonight, unlike our good friend Sparky Burns, who has one of the loudest and longest strike calls that I've ever seen. Hoping we'll see our good friend one last time before the season wraps up. We're kind of running out of time. We only have five games remaining. Four now. Home against the same Red Sox team tomorrow. And our last home game is going to be on Tuesday, and that's going to be against the Bourne Braves for the final time. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow home against YD. Monday on the road against Brewster. Tuesday home versus Bourne. And Wednesday, the final game of the year from Sp Spillane Field in Wareham. We'll end it for the Harbor Hawks. 6.45 first pitch, the latest game left on the season. What a way to end it. The last pitch of the season, the last out of the season, and we're going to be calling it from the cage. Not a bad spot to yeah, be calling it. Not a bad spot at all. That's going to prompt a mound visit from Coach Gary Calhoun, who gives the motion to the bullpen, and that's going to do it for Evan Webster. His night ends as we'll have a pitching change here. We'll have that name for you when we come back on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Back here for the remainder of the bottom half of the fourth inning, Sal Fusco is now coming into pitch in place of Evan Webster. Fusco will be the third pitcher on the line for the Harbor Hawks tonight as he will face Zach Liu with two away. 
Blue 0 for 1 on his line. A strikeout in the second. He got walked in the third, so only one official at bat so far. Let's go looking to get a quick out here to get the Harbor Hawks out of what's become a long bottom of the fourth. Red Sox have now scored at least two runs in every inning so far. Four in the first and two all the way from the second through the fourth. They now lead 10 to two. Currently runners on first and second. That's Bowser over at first, Knight over at second base. Out now at one and one, two away. Fusco from UMass Lowell brings the one one. That one misses outside. A good stop there from Raffelli, bringing the count now to two and one. Fusco this season in 10 innings has allowed 13 hits, 14 runs. He's walked 10 and struck out 8. That's the 2 1. Misses low. 3 and 1 now the count. 3 1. Fusco just entering the game. I'd be surprised if we see a breaking ball or an off speed pitch. Might be throwing his fastball here. 3 1 the count. Fusco with the fastball up near the chest. Swing and a miss from Lou. Bringing the count to full at 3 and 2. Now you know, Austin, I have to say, after a month of July where we've seen rain in a majority of the days as that one is fouled off, we'll stay at 3-2, and two. both runners retreat. Yeah, in a, day, in a month of July that has seen rain a majority of the days, it's very nice to finish out the month with poss possibly one of the most perfect days of the month. Finally, we've been waiting all <laughs> month. It seems like it's rained every single day, but we'll take it. Of course, tomorrow will be the start of the eighth month of the year, and 2021 flying by so far as the full count misses for ball four. That's going to load the bases for Wyatt Hoffman as the Red Sox find the top of the lineup. Yeah, tough spot here for Fusco. The top of the order due up and a dangerous hitter in Hoffman. Hoffman at one for three. Shook out in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the second, and singled in the third. He's had an at-bat in every inning so far. Count at one and oh, two away. Fusco ready to come home. The right-hander. Swing and a miss. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. A big swing there from Hoffman. He ended up getting underneath the ball, which came in around chest high. <laughs> Hoffman at 5'10", 170 pounds from Pacific, as that one is lofted over back behind first base. That's going to be caught by Nick Romano for out number three. Fusco gets out of a pickle as we head now to the fifth. Harbor Hawks trailing 10 to 2.
I'm Hunter Furtado, number five, left-hand pitcher from Wake Forest. I'm Austin Wallace, number 18, left-handed pitcher from the University of Texas. And you're listening to the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Nick Romano starting us off here in the bottom, in the top of the fifth inning. But before we get started here, as that first pitch misses up high, before we go any further, a quick word from Curry College. Curry College is where you go to become anything you want. Curry prepares students to engage in successful careers with learning beyond the classroom. Explore undergraduate programs, NCAA Division III athletics, and continuing education and graduate studies, including fifth-year master's programs. All of that at www.curry.edu. New pitcher on the mound now for the Red Sox, as this is Ryan Wiltsey coming in. Count now at three balls and no strikes to Romano. Romano's one for two on his line, a single and a ground out so far. The pitch, big swing, green line on the 3-0, brings the count now to 3-1. and one. Romano at first base. We've seen him at first base in all of his appearances this season. As the 3-1 from Wiltsey comes in, fouled off 3-2. and two. Yeah, Romano said he'd play a little bit of third base, and once he got to call it now an all only first baseman, he said he was better than his brother Ryan at, for, at third base when they used to both play that position. Of course, Ryan thinks he's better than Nick at third base. Sibling rivalry. Oh, a 3-2, a late strike three call. As that is a called strike three and out number one. Romano goes down looking. What a great breaking ball, though. Heck of a pitch. One away now. Strikeout number one and out number one on the night for Wiltsey. And now with one away, that's going to bring Kyle Ball to the plate. Ball is 0 for 2 with back-to-back 6-3 putouts. Watches that one go by. It's a called strike. 0 and 1. Ball from Stetson, sporting the Stetson helmet. As he watches that one go low, one and one. He's in the right-handed box wearing a black leg guard. The one one finds his own, strike two, one and two, now the count. He's got a great breaking ball on the mound. Got some great movement to it. Red Sox lead 10 to two here in the top of the fifth as Wiltsey brings the 1-2 home. Breaking ball that's lofted and fouled out of play. That breaking ball had quite a bit of break on that one. That started up above the chest near the neck, and then it dropped down to about belt high. Looks like a 12-6 breaking ball. Lots of movement. 1-2 once again, the pitch. Fastball that misses outside. 2-2, two two, now the count. Harbor Hawks looking for... Some magic here in the fifth. Looking to spark a comeback. The 2-2. Lofted over the head of Lee. That's going to get down for a base hit. Ball reaches for, for the first time tonight with a one-out single. Nice piece of hitting by Ball. Is he able to loft that one to left? Stays on it just long enough. And now one out, one on. Mitch Hardigan's going to step up to the plate wearing his Florida Atlantic helmet. FAU, part of the Conference USA, as the first pitch from Wiltsey is roped down the first base side. That's going to drop for a fair ball. Ball is going to be rounded, and he's going to be heading to third base. He's going to be stopped at third, as that is a one-out double for Mitch Hardigan. Good call by hitting coach Travis Poole, who happens to also coach third base, to hold Kyle Ball there. The throw to Hoffman was an accurate one, the cutoff man, and they would have had a good shot at Ball, even with his good speed. So with just one away, no need to risk that one. Now you have runners at second and third, and a good sh shot here for Trent Taylor. Right, coach Calhoun, who started out the season coaching at third base, he's moved, out to, he, he's moved down to first, and it seems that once that change was made, the first couple of games were slow, but since then, that's... What, I don't want to say it makes it, it made a difference, <laughs> but it really kind of has. Well, yeah, if, no you're, if, you're, if you're a superstitious yeah, guy, no correlation in terms of like skill sets or signs or anything. Yeah, no. Just yeah. 
you know, the mojo or the, you know, like you said, if you're superstitious. Yeah. Since they did that switch, then, you know, had it, the offense has heated up. But, I mean, coincidentally, I guess it's also the second half of the year. So I think guys are going to yeah. heat up anyways. It just yeah. happened to happen when they made that change. But no yeah. real thought involved into what they said. You know, just, hey, you know what, why not? Yeah, of things course. Things weren't heating up at the plate. Just switch them around, switch up the mojo. Yeah, try whatever you can, and I'm a very, as you know, Austin, of course, I'm an extremely superstitious guy mm -hmm. when it comes to baseball, so. Yeah, of course, I have the hat. Yeah. Uh, up until recently, I had the hat. Yeah, we had to retire the hat. That's a superstition that I'll just carry back with me to Texas as that 0-2 pitch is spiked in the dirt for ball one. Goes breaking ball, but it slipped out of the hand late as he spikes it in the dirt. Bounce way in front of the plate, not going to get Taylor to chase on that. Well, let's see from the stretch. He comes set, takes a quick look over near third base, the throw. Called strike three at the knees as Taylor goes down looking for out number two. And that's a second strikeout, both backwards. That breaking ball is so tough. It has a lot of movement to it. That one a little bit outside it looked like, but tough to see from here. Here comes somebody who's having a successful game in Raffelli. Joey Raffelli, one for one. He reached on a walk and had that two-run home run, the only runs for the Harbor Hawks. His first pitch is a breaking ball. That is gloved in the dirt by Keegan. It's going to bring the count to 1-0. and oh. Ryan Wiltsey from St. Mary's College, the junior at 6'3", 180 pounds. Brings home the 1-0, breaking ball. That misses up high, two balls and no strikes now the count. Ruffelli with his bat on his shoulder. Up until the pitch comes in and he's, he brings it up at the last second. Now and misses low, 3-0 the count. Shade now completely, co almost completely covering the third base side. As the only spot still in the sun is actually third base where Kyle Ball currently resides. Here's the 3 0 pitch. 3 0 breaking ball is a called strike. Count goes to 3 and 1. Red Sox with another pitcher that's comfortable throwing that breaking ball at any point in the at bat. As we saw that. Curve ball on the 3-0 count. Another pitch from Wiltsey coming in. Another breaking ball, a called strike. Tough pitch. It is. It's, it's finding the zone. Raffelli started to head on down to first. He took a step or two out of the box and then ended up back stepping his way back to the box after that one was called. Count moves to 3-2, and two, two away. Runners on second and third. The payoff. Another breaking ball, called strike three. My goodness. The breaking ball is on fire for Ryan Wiltsey as that's going to end the top of the fifth. Harbor Hawks strand two and trail 10-2 to two on the Harbor Hawks baseball.
I'm Luke Mann, third baseman from University of Missouri, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Back here now for the bottom half of the fifth inning. Before we get started, I'm going to pass on play-by-play -play duties to my partner, Austin Dakuda. Austin, the mic is yours. Thank you, Lincoln. Back here for the bottom of the fifth inning from Red Wilson Field in Yarmouth. The YD Red Sox currently leading the Hyannis Harbor Hawks 10-2. It's 10 runs on 10 hits, one error for the Red Sox, and two runs on six hits and three errors for the Harbor Hawks. Smith at the plate, and he's ahead in the count now 2-0 as Sal Fusco is back on the mound. Fusco came in and got the final out of that bottom of the fourth inning as he'll look to work through the fifth. Tanner Smith, the DH in the two spot today for YD. Takes ball three. Smith on the night is one for two. Yeah, the game, the game tonight so far for the Harbor Hawks, of course, the last couple of innings, we've seen a couple of walks here and there, but overall, it's been a pretty good game. The Red Sox are just finding the ball everywhere, and they're taking it to every part of the field. Fusco finds his own with the strike, and Lincoln, they've not only done it with the long ball, but a couple of hits strung together, and they've scored in every inning that they've come to the plate. Mm -hmm. Four runs in the first, and then two in each of the second, third, and fourth. The 3-1 is a fly ball, shallow center field off the end of the bat. It's going to drop for a base hit. Smith thinking two, but he'll end up just taking a big turn at first and retreat to the bag as it's leadoff single for Tanner Smith. That spot up the middle just proving once again just how tough it is to get to the balls there. As a, We've had a handful of base hits up that, up that middle spot tonight, and another base hit there is that one just falling past the glove of ball out there in center field. A defensive substitution came in to start the inning as Zane Harris now at first base in replacement of Nick Romano. Runner on first and Smith as Brooks Lee now at the plate as he swings up the first pitch, hits it a second. Taylor to second for one, the throw to first is in time. A 4-6-3 double play turned by the Harbor Hawk tandem of Taylor in ball, and that's a big two outs here for the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, a hard hit ground ball there from Lee, and Taylor, it didn't really seem to phase him. He just scooped that one up, a good throw over to second, ball making a great throw from second base onto first, just in time for that second out, a good double play. And now with two away, that's going to bring up the catcher, Cade Hunter. Hunter came in replacement for Dominic Keegan after Keegan was hit on the knee. Hope that Keegan is okay. Hunter comes into this at bat at six for 47 on the year with a home run and three runs batted in. Sal Fusco on the mound from UMass Lowell. He'll pitch to Joey Raffelli, the catcher. The 1-0 on its way. Fastball misses up, 2-0. Yeah, Ke Keegan taking that ball off the knee, one of the worst places to get hit with a the pitch. There's no there's no, nothing protecting the bone there on the kneecap. And it's Hunter a, lines that one to right center field that's going to get down for a base hit. Elliott cuts it off before it can get to the wall, and it's a two-out single for Cade Hunter. Center fielder, number six. And Lincoln, that's an uncomfortable Chase spot to get hit, as you just mentioned. And I haven't personally been hitting the knee, but we've seen some players get hit there in the MLB level, and it's just there's no there's no padding. You know, if you get hit in the thigh, yeah. you some meat to take care of it, or it just will bruise up. But... The knee's always a tough one. We hope that Keegan is okay. He's definitely had a very good season here for the YD Red Sox, and you hope that he's okay. But a balk is called in the meantime as Fusco unfortunately balked, and that'll allow Hunter to move up into scoring position as he now stands in on second base. Chase Luttrell now at the plate. Luttrell on the night, one for three with a run scored. Season batting average now at 223. No homers, but 13 runs batted in. Owen won the count after Fusco finds the zone on the first pitch of this at bat. Yeah, like you said, it, you said you haven't been hitting the knee with a pitch just yet? No. Yeah, I, I haven't been hit with a pitch at the plate, but I, like I said, I've talked about my brother quite a bit. You've never been hit batting? You've never get hit by a pitch? Well, no, not in the knee, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, not, not in the knee. No, I've been hit by plenty of pitches. It's not my favorite experience, but. Like I've talked about, my brother heading to play college ball at Shriner in the fall. Fouled off, 1-2. And he's a pitcher hmm. for his high school team. He throws the ball about mid to high 80s. And I caught bullpens for him all the time growing up. And his senior, just a, last year, I think, 
Uh, I was catching a bullpen for him just before I headed off to college, and he took a changeup right off my knee. One, two, swung on and missed. A big out number three as Raffelli catches that one. Doesn't go off his knee, but into the mid for a big strikeout to end the, end the inning. And the Whitey Red Sox strand five, one as we head to the six on the Harbor Hawk Baseball Harbor Hawk. Network. Hi, I'm Aiden Saravo, right-handed pitcher at Highest Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Right. That works. Back here for the sixth inning from Red Wilson Field, Austin Dakota and Lincoln Revel here with you. Before we get started, a quick word from Milton Cat for sales and rentals of Caterpillar machinery, generators, and marine engines. Visit MiltonCat.com, your area cat dealer. Milton Cat, the Cape and Islands Caterpillar dealer, is proud to be a sponsor of today's game. Caden Rhodes stands in to lead us off. Rose playing in his final game as a Harbor Hawk this season. They'll be heading out a bit early. First pitch of the inning to Rose is cut on and missed. Owen won the count. Good off-speed pitch there to get Rose over the top. No lights here at Red Wilson Field. One of the three ballparks without lights in the Cape. The others, Stony Brook Field and Brewster. And Lowell Park in Katuit. The game's moved up for the start time tonight, 4.30 start, but we're approaching the 7 o'clock hour at 6.45 now. See how much daylight we have left for this ball game. One one the count. Rose can't connect on that one, one and two. We should have a little bit more daylight at least. One difference between Red Wilson Field and Lowell Park in Katuit is that Katuit, a lot more trees around mm -hmm. where, around the, uh, what is it, the west? side where the sun sets? Is it west or the east? Not sure. <laughs> I forgot. I know oh. the last game here was did end at 7.30, just about ah. the same time as the games in Katua were ending. We'll see how long we go tonight. The 2-2 two -two to Rose, a breaking ball called. Strike three. Wilt has got that pitch working as he gets another looking for out number one. That thing is so nasty. That has such so much movement on it. It's a fantastic pitch. He's gotten the last three strikeouts, all three in a row, all on the breaking ball, and it has been a menace for this Harbor Hawks lineup so far. That'll get us back to the top of the order for Clark Elliott. He is 0 for 2, but he has a walk on the night, which extends that on-base streak another game. First pitch to Elliott, breaking ball. That misses the zone, 1-0. Oh. Now is it 19 games we said it's at, or 18? 19. 19, 19 now. now. 19 now, it was 18 coming in. Clark Elliott approaching what we believe is a cave record. We're waiting to hear on that official stat. The 1-0 to the Michigan outfielder misses for a ball, 2-0. Elliott, a Chicago Cubs fan. Didn't get a chance to talk with him about how he feels about the deadline moves. We'll have to chat with him tomorrow as the Cubs moved on from Anthony Rizzo. Former Cape leaguer Chris Bryant as that one's roped foul as Gary Calhoun. Cha-cha's out of the way, 2-1. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, that sounded a bit like one of my <laughs> jokes that I might say. Very, very nice. Elliott's Cubs nearly shipped off half their team. A few former Cape Leaguers were moved at the deadline as that one's grounded to first. Bowser's got it to flip onto the pitcher. Wilt's covering for out number two. Hard hit ball, but a good play again. Bowser and the right Whitey right pitchers right tonight have done a good job Dominic of getting over and covering that bag. Yeah, they have. They get over there in a hurry. And like you said, a good hard hit ground ball. Unfortunately, it was right to Bowser who scooped it up and was able to toss it over for that out. Two away. That brings up the Kansas State outfielder, Dom Johnson. Johnson on the night, one for two, also has walked. He's reached base twice. First pitch to Johnson, a fastball that he doesn't connect with 0-1. Johnson has raised that season average up to 260. He started the season with a bang with a three-run home running game, two of the year, all the way back against Katuit at home as that one is flown to center field, moving in his night. He camps under it, puts the glove up, makes the catch as the Harbor Hawks go down in order in the top of the six. YD coming up to bat when we return on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hi, my name is Gary Calhoun, and I'm the manager of the Hyannis Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to the Hyannis Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Back here for the bottom of the sixth inning as the Harbor Hawks look to put up back-to-back -back innings without allowing the YD Red Sox to score. And Sal Fusco back on the mound, Austin Dakota alongside Lincoln Revel in the broadcast booth as YD got off to a scorching start to this ballgame. Four runs in the Bottom of the first, two in the bottom of the second, third and fourth, which makes it 10 total as that one is flown to shallow center field. It's gonna get down for a leadoff single as Cody Huff is having the game of his life, his fourth hit of the night. He had two homers already, six total runs batted in and is now four for four. Yeah, the bat of Huff is just on fire and it's not stopping anytime soon by the looks of it. He's two home runs, two singles, four for four on the night and he's just had a fabulous night so far. That'll bring up Drew Bowser, the first baseman. Bowser on the night. He's 0 for 3 with a punch out. Let's go from the stretch now. He fires a first pitch that's hit to short. A diving stop by Ball to throw from his knee to second in time. Wow. What a grab by Kyle Ball, a sports center top 10 play, no doubt. Do you think we could send that in to Sports Center? Definitely try. Quite honestly, that could be a <laughs> SC top 10. That's just a phenomenal play there, a fantastic job. Unfortunately, we couldn't get that second out, but hey, that one out, fantastic. Kyle Ball saving a hit, getting a big out on the board for Hyannis. Pinch hitter here for the YD Red Sox as Daniel Rivera digs in. 
His first at bat of the night as he'll come in for Briley Knight. First pitch, misses for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Busco back on the mound now into his third inning of work. He's fired one and two thirds to this point. Last ball this time, a called strike, one and one. Harbor Hawks defense remains the same as when the game started, minus Zane Harris over at first, as it was Nick Romano who got the start. Harris came in to replace him to start last inning. One, one. That one skied to left field. Ball is back on it, but it's gonna drop for a base hit. Bowser will hold it second, so back-to-back -back singles. Three in a row. Or rather, it would have been three in a row, but the st diving stop by Ball. Third baseman number Limited eight. it, but the Is second single of Lee. the inning. Yeah, the third straight base runner reached for That's what I was the Red Sox. With. And a chance to do some damage with Lou at the plate, and then you have the top of your lineup. Runners on first and second, one away. Lou stands in, takes a called strike, 0 and 1. Lou on the night, 0 for 1. He does have two walks, so he's seeing the ball well and putting up a good night at the plate, showing some patience. The 0 1. Cut on and missed, 0 and 2. Let's go finding the zone. He's been around the zone, Lincoln, this inning. A couple of good pieces of hits by the YD Red Sox. Yeah, so far he's only posted one ball in this inning, and then, of course, those, or two balls, that is, and then those three hits, of course, sprung in there. Uh, yeah, he's been finding the zone in this inning, and he's doing a good job of pounding the zone. It's just the Red Sox seem to have no trouble finding the Harbor Hawks pitching tonight. Lou from Cal State Fullerton behind one and two. The pitch from Fusco in the dirt. Nice block by Raffelli. See slides and just throws the glove up and it finds the mitt as he saves from runners advancing. Lou at Cal State Fullerton at 313 with three homers. 16 runs batted in and four stolen bases. Good season for him. His defensive success has translated here to the Cape League, struggling a bit offensively. At eight for 65 now. The 2-2. Two -two. Popped foul out of play off towards the parking lot and that is going to be off of a car. Ugh. I don't think that went off of the windshield, so that's good, but. Well, at least the windshields are usually insured. That's true, that is true. 2-2 two -two the count to Lou. Yeah, this is probably the closest I've parked to a field this season, so I'm a little scared. Busco comes set, gets the signs, and fires. Breaking ball, called, strike three. A big pitch from Sal Fusco, and now there's two away. Yeah, beautiful pitch, and like we said, Fusco's been finding the zone, and he chose to go with that breaking ball there, started up near the chest, and then dropped down a beautiful pitch for that second out. That'll bring us back to the top of the YD order in Wyatt Hoffman. Hoffman, one for four with the run score tonight. His average now at 277 coming into this at-bat. Hoffman is mentioned, the son of legendary Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman. First pitch, Hoffman times that one up and sends it to the left center field gap for a base hit. Elliott will cut it off before it rolls to the wall, but it's hit deep enough to score Bowser as an RBI single from Wyatt Hoffman extends the YD lead. It's now 11 to two. He jumped on that pitch. He did, Hoffman has made contact in four of his five appearances tonight. And that one, he got every inch of it. That was a loud, loud base hit. Beautiful sound coming off of his bat as that one sailed into center field and another single for him tonight. Brooks Lee back at the plate now. Lee, two for three tonight with an RBI and a walk. Fusco looking to get out of this inning with just the one run across. Fires a called strike. 11 runs, 15 hits, one error for the Red Sox. Two runs, six hits, three errors for Hyannis. We're in the home stretch here as the Harbor Hawks look to finish the year strong. Fastball misses, one and one. Robinson now at the plate, a pinch hitter. It's 
Crew Robinson sends a ball to left field. It's hard to get under it, and he makes a catch to end the inning. So the Red Sox push across a run, but Fusco limits further damage as they strand two. We head to the seven on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hi, I'm Aiden Saravo, right-handed pitcher for Highness Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Right. That works. Luke Mann coming to the plate as he's set to lead us off here in the top of the seventh inning. Austin Nakuda alongside Lincoln Revel from the broadcast booth at Red Wilson Field from Yarmouth, Massachusetts, the home of the YD Red Sox, who currently hold an 11-2 lead over Hyannis. Mann comes into this at bat 0 for 3 on the night. His average dipped to 289, but he's put the ball in play in all three of his appearances. That one slipped out of the hand a bit early from Wilson. Ball one. Man, Harris, ball due up for high end. This is that one. It's cut on and missed. One and one the count, evens up. Man had a good swing there. He was looking to take that one for a ride. Unfortunately, he was just a little bit too early on that pitch. Wiltz back on the mound for his third inning of work. His man pops it up into shallow center field. Hoffman converging on it. But it's now the center fielder making the catch for out number one. That looks to be Williams out there. Lots of substitutions taking place for the YD Red Sox. Yep, that is Tyler Williams out there now in center field. So we'll Williams in center. There. Hoffman. Remains at second. Zane Harris digs in for the first time in this ball game as he came in as a pinch hitter, flies it foul. And ooh, a attempted catch by a fan who ends up stumbling off the bleacher, but he seems to be okay. That's something you never want to see. He's all right. Trying to make the catch for his son, it looks like. The 0-1. Breaking ball. Harris takes it back up the middle. It's Hoffman. Backhands it. Throw to first in time. Two away. Good play for there, there from, off, from Hoffman. Making that grab on the backhand. A long throw from almost behind second base to that first baseman, Bowser. And a good play overall. Good 4-3 put out. With two away, that'll bring to the plate Kyle Ball, the shortstop from Stetson. Ball on the night, one for three. As he stands in now for the fourth time. He made that sensational play to save a hit in the last half inning as he takes a ball, one and oh. Quiet night now at YD, as that one is a fastball that's popped up. Drifting out of play, off towards the concession stand just behind the first base dugout. There were a couple of people down there that had no clue where the ball was going. <laughs> Almost a dangerous play if they if it had been near them. Count now one and one. The pitch. Ball fouls it off one and two. 
Kyle Ball from New Hampshire, a Red Sox fan. His favorite player is Xander Bogarts, an all-star. Plays the same position as Kyle Ball at shortstop. One to the count, the windup and the pitch. Fouled off as Kyle Ball stays alive. An interesting little series there is Tanner Smith grabbed a ball that ended up going foul. He stayed over here next to Mitch Hardigan, who's in the on-deck circle, and then got that other foul ball before heading back into the dugout after the next pitch. That one misses high for a ball, two and two. Kyle Ball, a very patient hitter, leads the Harbor Hawks in walks, although Clark Elliott quickly approaching him. The 2-2. Two -two. Cut on and missed. The inning is over. The Harbor Hawks go down in order in the top of the seventh. We head to the bottom of the seventh with YD leading it 11-2. to two. I'm Luke Mann, third baseman from University of Missouri, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Back here as Patrick Caulfield steps in for the YD Red Sox as they start to empty out their bench a bit, get everyone some at-bats. Sal Fusco back on the mound in the bottom of the seventh, 0-1 the count. Breaking ball misses, 1-1. One one. Austin Dakota and Lincoln Revel here with you in the booth as the Harbor Hawks look to Mount a late comeback against the YD Red Sox. Caulfield on the year 0 for 4, making just his fifth at bat of the year. And Caulfield, the senior at UCLA, standing at 5'10, 185 pounds. The 1 1. Can't find the zone, 2 and 1. Sun slowly setting here in Yarmouth as daylight becomes a bit sparse. Still blue skies. Enough sun to hopefully continue a couple more innings and maybe get the whole game in. The 2-1 from Fusco. Fastball, did he go around? They'll check it first, and yes, indeed, he did, as the count now evens up at 2-2. Two and two. Good pitch there from Fusco, and Caulfield didn't want to go at it, but unfortunately for him, he couldn't hold his bat back enough, and now he's even in the count at 2-2. Two and two. The 2-2. Two -two. Back up the middle. Taylor at second has a hit off of him. The recovery throw is in time. Taylor. Good job knocking it down, keeping it in front of him, and regrouping to get out number one. Yeah, fantastic play from Taylor overall. He stopped it, ended up going in front of him a little further than he would have liked. He made the grab on the run and ended up throwing it from way off balance. He was about par His upper body was about parallel with the ground there, and then he ended up throwing it over to first where Harris was waiting for it, and a great out for that first out here in the seventh. Here comes Cade Hunter for his second at bat of the night. He's one for one after coming in for Dominic Keegan. First pitch, fastball, 
couple hundred fans remain here at Merrill Red Wilson Field. Is the count not one and one? I know he called the first one a strike. The scoreboard says two and zero. Oh. That misses. Now the scoreboard reads three and zero. Oh. Point streak reads two and one. Huh. We'll see. I was hoping that he would maybe motion what the count was there, but he didn't do it. Oh, there it is. It is. Two, and, two one. and one. Okay. All right. I was paying attention. Scoreboard, unfortunately, High five. a bit behind. Good job. The 2 1 on the way from Fusco. Fastball that misses now, it's 3 and 1. Fusco's got a battle back here. Not much motion around the park as it's quieted down a bit as it's ball four as Hunter draws the walk. He has now reached base safely in both his plate appearances in this ball game. So a runner on first for YD with one away. Yeah, good eyes from Kate Hunter there. He was able to find base for the second time tonight. Still one for one, as that one doesn't count as an appearance, but a good at bat overall. In steps Tyler Williams, who came in the game in center field. He'll get his first at bat of the night. First pitch to Williams, called strike at the waist, 0 and 1. Fusco from UMass Lowell. Comes into this game in relief of Evan Webster, who came in relief of Saravo. So the third pitcher on the night for the Harbor Hawks. The 0-1 is cut on and missed. Nice breaking ball, 0-2. Ryan Proto has cut Sal Fusco multiple times this year, but it's Joey Raffelli behind the dish now. Of course, Proto and Fusco teammates at UMass Lowell. But Fusco having no issues here, connecting with Raffelli, as that battery has looked good since he's come on in relief. Cut on and missed, a big out number two as Williams goes down swinging. Williams Williams went for it, but that swing turned out way away from the ball. That one dipping out and a bit outside, and then Williams wasn't anywhere close to making contact with that one. A good second out and a good strike out there. In steps Cody Huff as he lines that one to center field. Elliott's right there, so his perfect night will end there for now. As Elliott makes the grab, and the Red Sox are unable to push a run across here in the seventh. We go to the eighth as Harbor Hawks with the battle back. It's 11 to 2.
I'm Hunter Furtado, number five, left-hand pitcher from Wake Forest. I'm Austin Wallace, number 18, left-handed pitcher from the University of Texas. And you're listening to the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. <laughs> Joe Moran now on the rubber for the YD Red Sox as we get ready to begin the top of the eighth inning. Austin Dakota, Lincoln Revel here with you in the booth as Moran finishes his warm-up tosses in just a moment. Hardigan getting ready to lead us off here. Hardigan, Taylor, Raffelli, do up. Moran with only two innings under his belt so far. He's allowed two hits, two runs on those hits. Both were earned. He's walked three and has struck out only one. Getting some work in here as he looks to work towards the conclusion of this ball game. The Harbor Hawks look to put something together late here. Two runs on six hits, three errors for Hyannis, 11 runs on 15 hits, and one error for the Red Sox. Hardigan digs in to lead us off. He stands from the left side. One for three on the night for Mitch Hardigan. Big deep breath from Moran on the mound. The wind up and the pitch. Called strike 0 1. Wind up and the pitch. This is one and one the count. Mitch Hardigan making the trip up here all the way from Florida. He has some family in Connecticut that he visited on the way up. He's been staying in Sagamore Beach this summer, just over the bridges. A 1-1. One, one. Cut on and missed. One and two. Moran gets the signs from his catcher, Hunter. The 1-2. Ooh. This is outside, two and two. That was a great looking pitch there. A beautiful breaking ball that dropped just a bit too far on the outside. A good frame job by the catcher and just a fantastic job overall. Moran. From the windup again, the right-handed pitcher. The big leg kick and fires as Hardigan pops a foul out of play. Moran from Taylor University. Will be a senior. From Anderson, Indiana. Formerly attended Anderson. The 2 2 on its way. Chopper to first. And he'll take it himself as that's an out number one on the three unassisted by Cody Huff, who moves to first base. Lots of defensive changes as it's Huff at first. Second baseman number eight, Trent. Hoffman at second. Blue over at short. New person out in left field. I'll see who that is real quick. It's Patrick Caulfield in left. Tyler Williams in center. Daniel Rivera in right. Zach Lewitt short. And Drew Bowser goes to third. So lots of changes. Everybody wow. in new positions. So the infield is Bowser at third. Lewitt short. Hoffman at second. <laughs> Huff at first. Brooks Lee comes out of the game. Caulfield in left. Williams in center. And Rivera in right. Almost an entirely new starting nine. A couple of the originals remain in the game. Just moving around a bit. 1-1 one, one the count with one away. Pitch, cut on a miss by Taylor, one and two. <laughs> Moran gets the signs as Taylor calls time and steps out. Oop, that was the third base umpire, Rick Emerson, telling, telling Joey Raffelli to go ahead and move on back a little bit, he was a bit too close to home plate. <laughs> makes a big difference, I guess. Yeah, well, very similar. Remember, you saw that in the pros at one point a couple, a few years back, back when uh, when Adrian Bel yeah. yeah, when Adrian Beltre. <laughs> no mat to drag here. Yeah, no mat to drag. One of the 
kind of One a of minuscule cool. thing yeah. to pause the game over. Oh, yeah, it really is. 2-2, two, two, check swing, fouled off the bat at Taylor. The count will hold where it is. Yeah, that that game from Adrian Beltre, one of the one of the most memorable parts of his career, I think. Hmm. He was a great guy. Funny, he was funny person. I'm mi I'm the big I miss him, and the game of baseball misses him. I think they do. They miss the Beltre Andrus connection. The two two pop into foul territory. Huff moving over makes a catch, and there's two away. Joey Raffelli now. Now Coming up to the plan. Raffelli on the night, one for two, with a two-run home run and a walk. That two-run blast, the first hit of the season, as he was just activated recently and is making his first start tonight. Wind up and the pitch from Moran. As Raffelli skies that one down the first baseline. Huff giving it a look, and he makes a catch. Nice play by Cody Huff over at first to end the inning as the Harbor Hawks go down in order as we head to the bottom of the eighth from Red Wilson Field. Hi, I'm Aiden Saravo, right-handed pitcher at Highest Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Right. Bottom of the eighth, just moments away from Red Wilson Field. Before we begin with the action, let's toss it over to our sideline reporter, Taylor Farmer. Thanks, Austin. As we've talked about this season, there's been a lot of fans at these games here on the Cape. And looking at the stats for fans attendance, Chatham currently leads that with an average of 2,182 fans per game. Hyannis is actually second with 1,930. Then Orleans moves to 1,857. Harwich with 1,700. Katuit with 1,569. Falmouth with 1,556, Brewster with 1,192, Bourne with 1,084, a little surprising since they are leading the league. And then YD here where we're at tonight, 986, and Wareham at the bottom with 566. Thank you very much, Taylor. As Bowser gets ready to lead it off. South Fusco back on the mound here for the bottom of the eighth inning, looking to make quick work of the Red Sox. Called strike, one and one. Fusco has fired three and a third innings pitched out of the bullpen. Five hits, just one run, so Lincoln, he's doing his job out of the pen. That's yeah, he is. Can't really ask for much more. The one one on its way. Popped foul off towards the parking lot. That one's off a car. Oof. You're okay, Lincoln. and that was to the left of yours. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. I, I have faith. I have faith that mine won't get hit. But I feel very bad for everybody that had to park that parked on that front row. The one-two from Fusco, breaking ball, cut on and miss. Nice pitch from Sal Fusco as he picks up strikeout number four, and that's the first out of the bottom of the eighth. Another fantastic breaking ball there from Fusco, and a right good fielder, strikeout for him. Daniel Rivera. Now, number 28. strikeout number four on his line, and he's doing a great job. Daniel Rivera, the right fielder, coming in for the second time tonight as he came in as a pinch hitter. First pitch from Fusco to Rivera is 
popped up a foul ball as it heads towards the left field stands for a souvenir. Drops without any incident. Ooh, kid goes diving for it. He was he really looking successful? for it. Yes, he did. Oh, good. Yeah, it rolled down the hill, and then the kid came down after it. 0-1, oh, one, one away. Rivera, one for one on the night. Now two for two on the season. Breaking ball in the dirt, one and one. Raffelli's done a terrific job behind the dish tonight. Don't think we've even seen a pass ball at all mm -mm. in this ball game. One one the count with one away to Rivera. Wind up and the breaking ball a little bit low for Rivera to chase two and one. Yeah, it's kind of it's really impressive. Just any ball that bounces anywhere, it's almost like a his glove is a magnet. Just catching everything that comes his way. The 2-1 from Fusco on its way. Called strike, 2-2 the count. Ball game started at 4.30, so we're almost near the three-hour mark. It's moved quite well in the second half of the ball game. The 2-2. Fouled off. Another good battle brewing here with Rivera this time and see what happens here. See if Fusco goes back to that breaking ball that's helped him succeed tonight. The 2-2 is a fastball that misses high. 3-2. and two. Rivera, a late activation to this YD team. As mentioned, he's got two for two. That one misses. A walk for Rivera as he continues to reach base in the beginning stages of his Cape Cod career. So with one away, there's a runner on first. Yeah, Rivera also has reached base twice tonight, both of his appearances. Eight, a single with that back in the sixth, now a walk. And he's having a good night for himself as well. Here comes Zach Lou. With one away, Lou looking to come through here for the Red Sox and possibly add to their lead. He takes 0-1. Five of the original starters have come out of the game for the Red Sox. New guys getting some at-bats. Lou, one of the original starters. He's 0-2 with a pair of walks and a pair of punch-outs. That one misses, 1-1. One one. Bottom of the eighth inning, 11-2 the score as the Red Sox lead the Harbor Hawks. Diana's looking to finish out this season and possibly collect a couple more wins. It'll take a late rally to do that tonight. As that one's fouled off, one and two. So Ooh. many close games this year, Lincoln, between the Harbor Hawks and teams tonight. Unfortunately, not one of them, but there's a lot of games you look back on and you know one or two plays go differently. Hyannis could have been in the win column, but sometimes in baseball, that's just how it goes. Yeah, one. One game that really comes to mind is that 8-7 loss to Bourne, who was, has been the hottest, best team in the Cape. And we were up on them quite a bit, and unfortunately due to a couple of, a couple of late plays, the Braves ended up taking that 8-7 walk-off win. The 2-2 two -two misses, ball three. Born in Wareham, currently in action as the Gatemen lead the Braves 3-1 from Spillane Field. Get to it, currently at Falmouth. Score is 8-4, Kettleers in that ball game as that one comes in and hits Lou. He'll reach base on the hit by pitch. It would have been ball four anyways. So now runners on first and second with one away. That'll bring up Wyatt Hoffman. Taking a look at the standings around the Cape League. In the West Division, Bourne in first place still at 22, 7, and 3. The Kettleers in second at 15, 16, and 1. Falmouth in third at 14, 15, and 2. The Gatemen in fourth at 11, 17, and 5. And the Harbor Hawks in the five spot at 7 and 25 on the year. That one by Hoffman is lined to right center for a base hit. Rivera is going to be waved around and he'll score. An RBI single from Wyatt Hoffman. It's 12 to two, Red Sox. And nice piece of hitting by Hoffman. He is helping his 
Blue Red Sox make a late push for the playoffs, Lincoln, as Brewster has officially clinched a playoff spot in the East Division as they're 29-3, and three, making a late run for best record in the cave. Wow. Bourne, of course, clinched the East a couple of, or the West, rather, a couple of days ago, so those two teams have clinched. Harwich in second in the East at 18-10-4 is that one. Hit well to center field, but Elliott's right there. He'll make the catch, two away. And the YD Red Sox in third in the East at 13, 13, and seven. So they need a little bit of help to see if Harwich loses a couple of games. They win a couple, try to make their way into the playoffs. Not completely out of it yet. Yeah, w a couple weeks ago we saw the Braves seem like they were gonna run away with the best record in the season, but the Whitecaps have been making a late push and they're seven, two, and one in their last ten. Our Brewster was born at five and five, and sometimes the best teams make a late run and they get hot, get some momentum heading into the playoffs. You very well can see the Whitecap team go all the way. Did you say seven, two, and one in, in the their last, last ten? ten? They're they're ten, two, and one in their last thirteen. So the hot streak just keeps on going. Caulfield back at the plate. He's zero for one on the night. Two away. Runners on first and second. That's Lou over at. Second with Hoffman standing on first after his RBI single. Hoffman three of six on the day with two RBI. He's having a good day. The 0-1 to Caulfield is blocked by Raffelli, who continues to be a brick wall behind the plate for the Harbor Hawks. One and one the count. Yeah, Raffelli showing just how big of an addition he is to the Harbor Hawks team. He's been unstoppable and unpassable, I might say in tonight's game. The 1-1. One, one. Misses for a ball, 2-1. and one. Two, one the count. Let's go, come set. The 2-1 on its way to Caulfield in just a moment as a long pause. The leg kick and the pitch is fouled off, 2-2. Two 2-2, two. Two, two, two away. Bottom of the eighth inning, Harbor Hawks will come up in the top of the ninth and try to put together a historic comeback. Stands have emptied. Good deal here at Red Wilson Field, the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Raffelli tags Caulfield to end the inning and Fusco does his job out of the bullpen. A really good outing from Sal Fusco as that ends the inning. He finishes four and a third innings pitch, six hits, two runs, three walks, and five strikeouts. And a good night for Sal Fusco to come in relief, throw a few innings, and get us on our way to the ninth, 12 to two. YD as Hyannis comes up for their final at-bats in a moment on the Harbor Hawks Baseball Network. Hi, my name is Gary Calhoun, and I'm the manager of the Hyannis Harbor Hawks, and you're listening to the Hyannis Harbor Hawks Radio Network. Caden Rose set to lead us off as the Harbor Hawks come up to the plate for the final time in this ball game, top of the ninth. It's Rose 
Elliot Johnson due up for Hyannis, and this could very well be Caden's last at bat of the summer for the Harbor Hawks as he will be heading home to Alabama after the conclusion of tonight's ball game. A 20 hour drive. Ooh. Plans to drive as straight through as possible. Probably have to stop at some point, get a quick rest in. I hope. But for now, he Ooh. takes a pitch off the back and reaches base safely on the hit by pitch. The second time in the night he's been hit by a pitch. And that's a way to go out. Ow. Start of the year in the first game getting hit by a pitch against Bourne and now gets hit by a pitch in his final plate appearance. Well, I guess you could say he got he got a hit to end the season. Reaches or so, someone got a hit because Rose just got hit by that pitch and took it kind of off the kidney spot. It was a well, he painful place to get hit. Safely. Yeah, he does. It was a painful spot to get hit. Speaking of reaching base safely, Clark Elliott extends his on-base streak to 19 straight games. He's 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. Rose is okay. He'll stay in the game at first after the hit by pitch as Joe Moran back on the mound for his second inning of work. <laughs> Elliott takes a ball, 1-0 and the count. Clark Elliott from Michigan has been a mainstay of the Harbor Hawks lineup, primarily in center field, occasionally in right field. Made his debut back on July 5th, and the Harbor Hawks are glad to have him. The 1-0 is below the zone, 2-0 the count. Elliott batting 346 on the season, two homers, seven RBI. Good speed at first in Caden Rose. As Moran comes set, takes a deep breath, and brings home the 2-0. Elliott a bit late on that one as he skies it to deep left field. It'll drop foul, two and one. It was a loud foul ball. Looked like, looked off that bat like it was gonna head to the fence. It was a very hard hit foul ball there. A bunch of defensive changes a couple innings ago. If you're just joining us, it's Caulfield in left, Williams in center, Rivera in right for the Red Sox. Bowser at third, Lewitt short, Hoffman at second, and Huff at first. Five of their original starters out of the game. The 2-1 is fouled off by Clark Elliott. Hyannis looking to battle back here. Austin Dakota, Lincoln Revel in the broadcast booth. And after the conclusion of the game, we'll be heading onto the field to record our post-game show, Hawk Talk, which you can see on our YouTube. Hyannis Harbor Hawks on the YouTube. And you're going to be... You're going to be recording, or not recording, but hosting tonight's episode of Hawk Talk. 2-1 is skied to center field. Williams racing in. Hoffman racing out. He'll make the catch for out number one. Wyatt Hoffman having a good all-around game. He has three hits, plenty of putouts at second base. Right fielder, number six, and Dominic Johnson. That'll bring up Dom Johnson with one away. Yeah, good fly out there from Hoffman. He came back near near. Shallow center field and made that grab and a good first out here in the ninth. Moran from the stretch fire is a fastball that misses one and out. Caden Rose over at first after reaching on the hit by pitch. Dom Johnson now at the plate. He's one for three on the night. Batting average on the season now at 257. He's also reached on a walk. Johnson with two homers and 11 runs batted in. D10. That one. It's a right field. Rivera moves under it. He makes the catch for out number two. Hyannis now down to their final out. Number 17, Luke Mann. And with two away, that'll bring up Luke Mann. Top of the ninth inning as Hyannis looking to possibly push a couple more runs across and narrow that deficit a bit. 12-2, the Red Sox lead it. He scored four in the first, two in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth, one in the sixth, and one in the eighth. First pitch to man, cut on and missed, 0-1. 
And the bats for the Red Sox have just been on fire all night long. And they, they have the runs to prove it. 7.40 now here from Yarmouth, Massachusetts on the East Coast. That one misses one and one the count. Daylight at a premium as it set the sun sets behind the trees, so this ball game nearing its end. That's a beautiful sunset there, just a a, a pinkish, almost orange or orange pinkish. Ground ball to second. Hoffman gloves it, flips on to short as Lou steps on the second base bag to end the game. YD Red Sox take a 12-2 win over the Hyannis Harbor Hawks from Red Wilson Field as the Red Sox improve to 14-13-7 and seven on the season. As Hyannis can't come up with the victory tonight, 12 runs.